and uh, we're back live. Ooh, it, it feels like uh, it hasn't been that long since we stopped streaming. Um, for those of you who don't know, we streamed for uh, streamed for like seven hours today. Um, we did uh, we're we're doing Operation Quarantine, so we kind of got through uh, some of that today. We started our project. We dove into the start of the project. We got some user stories. We ran into roadblocks. We struggled. But uh, we're okay. We'll continue tomorrow. What's up, everybody? Let me get the stream chat off. Um, switch this up. What's up, Smeter? How you doing? What's up, Achilles Oatmeal? What's up? What's up, Maddox12? I, I love it. I'm a child. Uh, it's always going to be funny. Put that there, because I can see your chat here. I actually feel like I need something to keep your attention on the screen. I actually don't know why. I don't have just like a main screen of uh, with without my screen showing, so... I kind of actually feel like I should do a interview prep. Is it like a sweet image we could put up? Yeah, look at this. Uh, full screen. Open image in new tab. What? Oh, that didn't. That didn't. Oh, can I? Do I even have F11 on my keyboard? I don't. Well, there you go. This is gonna be what's gonna. This is gonna be the placeholder for everybody. I missed a couple of streams, and there's a new skin and layout and everything. Yeah, what's up? What's up, Yeezy goodness? Uh, we did that for uh, the Saturday stream. Actually, we did a Docker. Um, we did a Docker event on Saturday, a super meetup. Um, and you know, there were gonna be some new people along, which there were. There were a lot of Saturday was there were a lot of people on Saturday. Uh, so we just had to get a little bit fancy for them. So we just upgraded just a bit, just a little bit. Still learning about this Twitch stuff. Um, but it is a little bit better. What's up, Mondragon FX? How are we feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling surprisingly good. I thought I would be more tired. Um, I knew this week was gonna this week was gonna be long, uh, so I actually took off. I took off my day job to kind of run through that uh, Operation Quarantine project. Uh, so we're running through. Uh, gonna be having some fun with that, but um, I don't know. That wasn't as mentally daunting as I thought it was gonna be. So that was good. Question. I know the Python course is ending, but if I subscribe, will I still get access to the older Google Docs problems and assignments? Yeah, I, yes, you will. Um, I need to. So there's a there's a couple of things with that. Um, yes, you will. Uh, the the code. People told me that the code in that the code that is currently in what's that thing called? Uh, mine just went blank. What's the thing that start Discord? Told me the things that are in Discord are. Uh, aren't working so maybe i don't know if the the codes must automatically swap out or expire or something maybe i didn't know um so i need to update those but yes you will um i'll definitely get you those um for sure and dope i'm glad you're going through the series on youtube um the the last week stuff will be up pretty soon what's up terrence welcome back actually terrence you wanna wanna hop on zoom man i'll uh i'll tag you in let me send you a zoom link actually my bad i didn't get that set up beforehand me, like I said, me and Terrence have actually been on all day. And we're just trying to try to get everything set back up. Let's see, host a meeting. Video off, I feel like. We'll just get set up so we can get him on as well. Invite. There goes the dog, she's saving us. She's definitely saving us. Um, but yes, I will. Someone asked earlier about it. Um, as soon as this stream is over, I have it at the actually at the top of my list um, on my on my uh, task list right now uh, of things to do. Terrence, I'm sending it over right now on Slack. Uh, we had some. So me and Terrence, obviously, we were operating out of you know out of the same space, but since we have to practice our social distancing, we uh, we, we have it. We didn't have time to figure out a good way to be able to like stream like this. So, I mean, Zoom is working surprisingly well, uh, audio wise, video wise, it's a little interesting, but uh, but yeah. So you can hop on there. Um, and we should just hear him whenever he's on there. So cool. Tonight we are uh, a single course away. This, this course is another one um, away from the end of the bootcamp stream. So congratulations again, everyone for making it this far. We made it a long way. Uh, we did really good. Uh, when did a monitor behind you put TV? Oh, 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 I like that. I like that. I do have enough monitors here to make that happen. I might do that. Maybe a large TV. See, 
I, that, that's a that's a good idea. It's 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 uh it's a little bit inconvenient and a little bit unorthodox, but I think it could work. Uh, but we're finishing it all up. How are we going to take everything that we've learned and kind of put it together? Uh, we have this, and then we do have a panel on Wednesday. Um, we did do a panel last night with the DevOps stream, uh, but there were just there's engineers of all types. Um, there's going to be more software engineers um, on the Wednesday one. I've actually gotten a surprising amount of people agree, but I'm, I cut it down. Actually, I had to. I had to ask some people if they were okay not joining just because of uh because it can't be quite as fluid because it's over zoom um people interrupting each other like it would like it, it's 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 tougher on zoom um so trying to keep it around six people um different it, it'll be a different group of people um doug may be oh. on again but it will be well, i can hear you i think yo yo yep yep you're good cool, cool. Can, i didn't can, know we were keeping it into uh six people that's news to me yeah can you can you uh can y'all hear terrence can y'all hear me if I sound a little different, I did have a glass or two of wine, but <laughs> I do feel good. <laughs> Unholy Trinity of chat apps. Yes. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yep. But hey, you got to work with what you got. We got to work with the things that we have. Um, Old drinker already, bro. <laughs> that, that's you. You said it. Yo, you said we it. don't know what's in that McDonald's cup, to be oh, fair. It's tea. I literally just went out to get tea. <laughs> Like I don't, I don't eat, uh, I don't eat McDonald's anymore. But I was really, after we got to the last stream, I just went for a drive, uh, just to get out of the house. Um, I didn't want to go anywhere, so I went and got some tea. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's actually Lacroix. Sir. It's Lacroix. <laughs> it's Lacroix. <laughs> I had to put it in the biggest container I could find. Um, <laughs> you remember? It is Lacroix, in fact. Yo, he be keeping us on like point, bro. No man, I don't know you. Look, man, I don't know what we're gonna do. I don't know. Um, so let's, as usual, again, let's just take. A look at this academy website curriculums um let's head on down um so we're gonna hit through uh we're here now here tonight cracking the code interview let's learn about uh where to go from here what you can do to get a little more uh a practice and stuff um how to prepare yourself and we're gonna we're gonna talk about whiteboarding we're not gonna whiteboard uh just because we've done different algorithm stuff um we're gonna talk about how to approach whiteboarding um yeah, and then we're gonna have the panel. And then this is for everyone. This isn't just for the Python bootcamp on Friday. Uh, we'll be playing games again, but um, it'll be a, a retrospective talking about the boot camps themselves. Um, this will be the opportunity to give uh, some good feedback, even though this always the door's always open for feedback, uh, but to give some uh, structured feedback and just talk about kind of what went on, uh, what we like to see as we kind of go forward and just, I don't know, how can we, how can we build um, how can we build this community? Not even, just, it's not even just build, it's not build this channel. It's really, how do we build the community? Um, you know, to encourage others to, to do stuff like this. Actually, like one good thing that has come out of COVID is that there's a lot of people, um, offering up, uh, you know, streaming and offering up free resources to kind of help people get into tech. So, um, so maybe we don't even have to talk about that piece because it looks like people are doing it already, but, um, that's all that'll be, um, and that'll be for both boot camps and just to kind of chill, play some games, but, uh, yeah, that's where we are. So that's fun. Um, can't believe we're this far. Um, also, just some news, and this is news to you too, uh, Terrence. What's up? Um, because because everyone's at home, um, I might move. I might like I'm almost done with this. Uh, we might move up. I might move up at least this boot camp. Oh, okay. uh, the intro to cloud computing. Like we were gonna. It was gonna not be until May. Uh, we we're gonna kind of take a month, like just to keep the timing right to be able to run three of these. Let's go. But we might walk right into a new. Uh, at least one new series. Um, we're still developing a few other ones, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah it'll be- Time out, time out, time out. The timing around this new one. Ar around what new one? The, around, uh, the <laughs> around the intro to cloud computing, when you teach it. Is, will it be eight or? Eight and doubt it. Um, okay. It'll probably be earlier. It'll probably be earlier in the evening because again, this, I'm actually surprised everyone who's on right now is on right now. <laughs> um, yeah, like, I know everyone's all been working right. all day, so respect respect everyone for and props to the people who were here earlier who are back um super respect uh it's a it's a you know a lot of information and just to just to be hanging out on the computer i guess i guess if you have nothing else to do i'm glad you're with me but uh <laughs> for sure um you're yeah, right fast commute these days 100 percent. so um exactly ever, ever, we're all we're all home we're all home so it's nice um okay Let's talk, and maybe let's that'll, that'll be the placeholder. And tonight's gonna be a good opportunity for you to ask questions and stuff as well. I don't think tonight would, well, 
I always say that. Every time I say I don't think it'll be two hours, it, it is two hours. We always um, go past the two hours. We but... always go past the two hours. But <laughs> tonight's a, it's going to be, um, it's going to be an opportunity for um, a lot of people to share uh, their, their experience and information for, uh, for interviewing. I'll give you my tips and tricks and like the things that I've seen and the things that I think can make you, um, uh, you know, more enticing to the interviewer and to the company. Um, but like there again, there are a lot of there are a lot of technical resources. There are a lot of uh, resources for you know some of the other things. But we'll just talk about some of the specifics of what um, I think we've seen so far. So one, if you went through this Python course, um, what like should you expect to be able to go get a job in in coding or software or whatever? Um, I would I would say I would say that. Uh, would you say? It really depends on the level. I mean, if it's a junior level, it depends on that. Plus how willing the company is to actually train you and allow you to learn as opposed to you just coming in there, you know, immediately contributing. I think if they're willing to give you a couple months, taking what you taught them and learning like an extra six months, absolutely for a junior role. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it depends on how much you've done over the course, like outside of just uh, what we've done here, uh, because we, I think we covered I think I think you have the base low. I think you'll have the base level skills to be able to go somewhere and uh, and 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 contribute um, if you kind of have a really good handle on the skills. But um, it, it like practicing that and understanding there's a caveats to all of it. There's little tidbits here and there um, that make it a little bit easier. Um, that that will really enable you to go out and get the job. Um, so I would say I would I, I would say that probably most people who went through this uh, went through this twelve weeks probably need an additional uh, probably need a little more um, practice at least maybe not more learn like you need more practice. Um, everyone constantly needs more practice. So I just want to be realistic about that. Like don't think you made it to the end of the twelve weeks. You're done. You can go do this and that like yeah try you should be trying to um but you can't you can't stop here uh this is not the end goal this was the the kind of fast track to get you going to make sure warm up, man. you were yeah like to, to kind of get you <laughs> uh, to a high level like understanding these skills you can move to any language you want um really coming with these skills you can at least move into the language and start to do things effectively as you're learning so um so that's why i think this was a good that's why we kind of did things the way we did things i think it was a solid base of of I guess computer science like coding coding knowledge. Also, what's up, uh, Ezekiel J20? Good to have you. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for the follow. But um, yeah. So going forward, uh, you do need to continue to practice. Um, I, it's interesting because I think software um, has a has a particularly um, interesting barrier because it's a little more um, the things that you can be doing day to day uh, are are like it's very broad the types of things that you could be doing day to day but the kind of core competencies you need to solve those things uh is actually relatively small to be honest um it, it's it is there's a the, the computers are relatively uh, they're, they're they're relatively simple they're they're logical um and there are many different ways to do things but there's a core group of skills that you can use to solve most problems not every single problem but most problems um and just finding out different ways to do those i think uh, can really put you in a good space um but i think that that i think that aspect actually makes software interviews pretty tough again because you can do things so many different ways to solve so many different problems you know you can use a hammer to solve a lot of the problems you can use yeah. a screwdriver to solve a lot of the problems um so you kind of never know what you're going to be walking into in an interview um and it's scary it can definitely be it can definitely be pretty scary but i'm curious actually what was your scariest moment when you had uh when you started interviewing scariest moment in your whole life what? well i mean like individual moment i don't know but every time i was asked to whiteboard it was petrifying really uh, okay uh it was actually worse it was actually worse when someone sat me down in front of a computer um and it would they sat, me, they sat me down in front of a terminal um and was like yeah do these things and it went fine uh luckily it went fine but uh it was i don't know why it was so it was so was scary, scary because you yeah. can't as opposed to just general questions, you can't really BS your way through. You uh, uh, once you get, you, you can't hide from the whiteboard, and that's yeah. that's kind of what sucks. Um, you can't hide from the whiteboard. And you cannot. Hide. It's gonna you show everything, you, bro. You can't. You can't hide because it shows, and it shows more. So it shows more than just 
uh, your inability to solve the problem because that, that, that may not be true. You may be able to solve the problem, but there's a lot of other factors in there. But at the same time as it being, you know, a pretty scary time and a, and a place that can kind of expose you, it's also a place where you can shine in a number of different ways that aren't technical as well. Um, but we'll get into that once we get into once we get into the whiteboard section. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what to, um, I guess, one, break down the different pieces of an interview. Um, break down. Um, I also want to talk to you about some interviews just being bad interviews, not necessarily at the fault of your own. Uh, inter interviewing is complicated because uh, people are doing them and we are, uh, we're not infallible and the interviewer could be terrible uh, and that can cause a lot of problems. You guys could be incompatible, whatever. Uh, they may not know what they're doing, um, all kinds of stuff. So it's not always you. Um, I think people place a lot of uh, emphasis on the things that they do themselves, um, which isn't true. So. The different pieces of the interview for uh, are, are, well, the, the the things that I feel like you have to pass in an interview. Um, I, I think there are really three, there are really three things. There's a, there's a, the technical aspect. Uh, what is your technical competence? Uh, and generally, generally that's gauged upon what you've put in your resume, uh, what you've kind of said you've done and a little bit of probe <laughs> into what yeah. they need. Um, a little combination of both or should be. Um, the second piece is the, um, is the is the cult is the is the culture fit uh slash uh are you could you be a a a valuable co-worker uh test like are you somebody who can um that that people want, like would would work with or that, that could work with the team and then the third one um i think i think doug said it yesterday was that likability score um uh, like yeah. how much the person likes you these things matter um these things, I think there are three categories. Maybe there are more. This, these are the three that I feel like are most important. And I think you have to play. Uh, I think you have to learn how to play the game to leverage which one uh, you want to really make shine. You may, you, you can, you can hit all three depending on who you get again as your interviewer. The questions they ask, all that stuff is very important in going into that. Um, What's the three again? Uh, is your technical prowess, your 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 you know your technical chops, the uh, your your ability to work with a team, the kind of cultural yeah. fit, um, and the last one is just likability. So, um, someone can can really believe you're a great fit for the team, and that like you would work well with others, and that people could get stuff done with you, but also not really like you that much. Like they just not really feel strongly about you. So, um, yeah. I do like to separate those two things because uh, and this is just these are also things as I've been as I've been in an interview in the interviewee interviewer seat, um, right. that kind of, I've had to gauge. Um, and again, you, you want to be, you, you be always fair. say you want to, you want to hire without bias and all this you other stuff. Like yeah. we're all inherently biased. Like, yes, you want to do your best to, uh, get some of that stuff out and, and, and really, um, be as fair as possible. But, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to do. Like when you come across someone who you just really like, cause you meshed well, it's very hard not to, try to get them in the door um or or if you really find someone who's super duper technical that you think would really be valuable for your team um yeah i usually just boil it down to if i hire this person is my job gonna get harder and if it if that answer is yes then and i've only like i guess been in an interviewer spot like two or three times in my whole career um if that answer is yes if, I, if it's gonna get harder because of you and I have, I probably only saw that once, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, honestly. And everybody else, I just give the, the okay to. Um, it really boils down to that question. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how do you, how do you conquer, I guess, how do you conquer these three different things? Um, one, I want everyone to know, the first thing is that you have way more control over the interview than you might think. Um, most of the time there are, I've been in some very prescriptive interviews where you walk in and they're just there. They have their questions. Um, and uh, usually the, the, the interviews where you don't have much flexibility are honestly the interviews where the person interviewing you doesn't understand the things that you do. Um, so they can't really they can't really have a, a flowy conversation. They can't have a fluid conversation with you because they have nothing else to go off of besides that piece of paper in front of them uh, that kind of has that stuff on there. Um, so, oh, what's up, Ezekiel J? Um, well, you're already here. Appreciate the host for sure. Um, but yeah, what was I? I was saying, what was I saying? I was just saying something. Um, and, and I already you can forgot. never do something to the host. What? Fight them, fight them on the floor, roll around on the carpet. 
What? Exactly. What are you talking about? Something like that, dude. It was Bruh. really you. You just went off the handle. Okay. Well. <laughs> All right. I don't know, man. Something piece. Of I was paper. listening to, bro. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Control in the interview. Yeah, about the amount of control you have, you have in the interview. Perfect. Thank you. That um, that you know is usually as long as the person actually knows uh, the person hiring you, as long as they know about your job and like what you're going to be doing, it's pretty easy. To, it, I wouldn't say it's pretty easy, but it's 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 you can pick up the skills to be able to control that conversation, the flow of that conversation. Um, every question that's asked is an opportunity to move it in your own in your direction. Um, and this is uh, this is a powerful this is a powerful tactic. Um, and it, it is, it's much easier to do, to do than you think, uh, especially when you're not 100 percent sure about the answer to the question. Um, so let's say someone asks asks you, um, hey, um, can you explain like maybe they don't want you to whiteboard but maybe they're saying hey like we do a lot of algorithm stuff here like uh do you know the difference between a merge sort and a bubble sort and do you think you could express that to me now i'm not sure this is a good software question or not um but i'm 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 confident it's a question some people have gotten um and you may know the answer um or you may not or you may know it and you just you know in that moment you have trouble thinking about it but um, you can, you can be vague, uh, for questions you don't know, you can be vague, uh, and, and like, yeah, like I know that these, uh, these are two sorting algorithms that are used to, you know, um, sort, uh, a set of data in a, in, you know, a, a different manner. And, and you can kind of veer off and say, it's okay to say one, I'm, you know, not a hundred percent sure, uh, the difference I've maybe I've done both, but haven't done them in a while, but, uh, you can, you can veer off, uh, and start talking about things that you do know. Uh, as a part of that um and generally interviewers will pick up on that and start to ask questions deeper into the things they that you do. brought up they really uh, do. yeah so you lead them you lead them away from the things that you don't know um to things that you do know and again it is also okay to admit the things that you do not know um and, but but like provide do so while providing some additional insight or asking questions about that thing. So if it's like, hey, like yeah, like I, I've seen I've seen some merge sorts done. I've never seen a bubble sort. Would you mind explaining to me how bubble sort works? Um, and like you'd be surprised at how interactive that conversation could be. We actually had uh, a woman on our team uh, do the exact same thing. I think we asked her about um, I don't know. Uh, like it, it was something about react and like something about the dom i don't know at the time i wasn't i don't know if i was listening but she didn't she like she said just enough to show us that she knew something about the subject uh and then she inquired about like what what like what, what like what it is can you please explain to me i'd love to know a little more about that and the conversation that we ended up having about that like her asking questions showing that she understood Oh, like everything surrounding this thing, context, yeah. like understood the context 100% that kind of showed that she's seen this stuff. She's participated in this field. Uh, it was, it was, it was pretty cool. Um, but you can in fact do that. So one, again, controlling the interview, I think is something that you can, that you can do, uh, in, in most of the aspects of the interview. Um, Terrence, have you, have you seen that? Have you been able to, have you ever felt that you could like, that you have more control in the interview that you, uh, than you thought? Absolutely. I mean, um, I think your best bet going into those things is just honesty. Like you say, um, if you don't know something, please just say it um, more times than not. Like, at least in my experience, they actually want to give me the job because they need help. They, they need a developer. They're not having five interviews a day for two weeks, you know, for playing. They actually want you to get the job. So they, if you be honest about it and say, oh, I don't know this thing, and you actually show some, show some interest, um, to find out more about, like Aaron said, they'll explain it. And then you don't know where that conversation will go. It might lead into something you do know. It just might lead into them liking you more, which again, plays into all this. Um, yeah, you just gotta be honest, man. Just be yourself, be honest. It'd and be also, okay. also, when you ask to explain, if they cannot explain, uh, it start it starts to do it starts to do a number of things, but one of them is uh, level setting, and it, it, what it does is it pulls away. So I think most people would agree that they don't want there to be a a power dynamic, you know, in an interview. But there's a there is there's inherently a power dynamic there, and when you when you admit that you don't know something and you ask someone to explain it, um, which may have looked bad for you before you well not bad, but it, it's possible for you when you said. Hey, like I'm, I'm not sure about that, or I've never seen that. Uh, that's kind of a miss or so on the question. But if you were to ask, like, hey, like that's something I've been interested in. I've heard about it before. Um, would you mind, you know, explain it to me a little bit? And if the person interviewing you can't do it, uh, it starts to make it. Uh, it takes away that power dynamic a little bit, and it helps. 
I think it helps you and it helps uh, the interviewer who may, you know, even though unintending to kind of have that dynamic may start to bring them down to earth a little bit about like the things that they're asking and allow the conversation to go in a way. Yeah. To go in a, a, a plate, to go to a place that like, it, like that matters. Like that it doesn't need to be a lot of, a lot of interviewers take the conversation to places that it doesn't need to be, be like, because they read online, this is what I should ask in the interview. Right. Um, <laughs> and it's like, wh- like, why am I asking this person about this? I've, I've done it. Like, I'm like, well, I, 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 I asked them this because I Googled, what to ask a DevOps engineer five minutes before? Uh, what are some good Sometimes DevOps questions? Five minutes before too. Yeah, so, like yeah, you know, that's, that's it true. Puts too. you in a weird spot. It does, and so I don't know. Um, like I said, the, the interviewer is is a, is a is a huge variable in this equation. You can um, get. I bet you could. I bet you could get interviewed by four different people at the same company uh, and ask the same questions, and you'd have a completely different outcome with all of them, even if you answer them the exact same way. Um, big variable. What's up, Samir? Thank you for the sub for the tier one sub. Good to have you as a part of the family. Also, I did see your question about uh, can you get a can you get an entry level position without a degree? Absolutely, one hundred and fifty percent. I can't tell you how many people I come across uh, all the time who do not have degrees. It is not something that um, it's not something that I think our company checks for. Like no one really checks for. I I don't think I've ever been asked um, about my degree. Maybe if you work if you're working for the government. Yeah, like if you're working for the actual federal government, I think it's a necessity. Um, but besides that, um, I think some bigger corporations do. Um, now everyone gives you the or equivalent experience thing, but uh, you do not. Uh, you do not need a degree, but you should use that opportunity to uh, to be able to kill them with your technical prowess. I think. Um, he also yeah. made a suggestion of showing your pecs during your interview. Um, showing what? Showing your pecs, your firm uh, pecs, um, to help in the interview process. Oh yeah, Flexing, you know, like the rock. <laughs> oh okay, I yeah, I don't uh, see how it would hurt. You know what I mean? I do, but uh, okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure, let's do it. Um, but um, well, yo, what if a guy actually started doing that in the interview? Just like mid interview, just started chest popping, bro, like <laughs> flexing. I think it would depend on. I think I think I would respond to it differently depending on whether whether I felt like he was trying to hit on me, or Ooh, or, or if he or, or if he was trying to to just you know show off what he worked hard for. If I felt like he was showing what he worked like showing off what he worked hard for, I think it would be okay. I mean, it'd be I, a little it'd be a little weird, but it's okay. You know, it's yo. I think if he did it in a funny way, just to break the ice, maybe like right when I sat down, that might that might actually be in his favor. I, like, I mean, maybe it like it seems like a risky thing to do, but it's uh, very risky. I, I probably respect that. I probably respect you got to respect it. I, I probably respect that. How much does one's GitHub matter for getting an interview for software? Um, I find it like I find that uh, inter- people interviewing for software look at it uh, fairly heavily. I would I won't say fairly heavily, but uh, more than more than I expected. I always thought that was a. Um, I think I had the idea that that was always like. No, like, yeah, they'll ask for it, but they don't really look at it. But I think that people do uh, look at it, especially if you don't have uh, a, some, a lot of experience. Um, I think people do use it as a as a gauge to see what's going on. I think the quality of projects on there, I think it does matter. Um, I think it does matter. Uh, I, I, again, I think I, to- I feel bad because I think I told people years ago, like, and again, this was me coming from, uh, you know, the, the, the systems engineer kind of, starting out in DevOps background and stuff where like our interview process is way different. That's the reason why I do two different interview uh, topics because I th- that, that process is uh, surprisingly different than a software one. Only reason I know that is because I've been in on a fair number of software engineer inter- interviews um, and I've dealt with, um, I've actually sat it, I've actually interviewed for a fair number of software positions as I was moving deeper into DevOps because I actually wanted to spend a year, um, I actually wanted to spend a year doing uh, software development to, uh, inc- to better my DevOps skills, to be honest. And it is a, Interesting. it is a yeah. vastly different, uh, it's a vastly different interview experience, uh, to me at least, because again, the software, the software interview is not all about right and wrong. Um, there's a lot of, uh, choice. Hmm, uh, break that down. A, what you mean? There's a lot of choice in software. Um, there's a lot of, uh, Oh, choice something. in design patterns. There's a lot yeah. of choice in 
like there's there's not a lot of wrong answers there's a well why like why did you think that was the best answer and i think that is why you need so much practice in uh in in software because like like when someone asks you things like that um generally in those kind of answers you can you can really highlight like like it shows what you've seen it shows what experience. you've touched it yeah. shows that experience and like it's so hard to get that like it is so difficult like i i got asked that like somebody was like oh like like why do you like python better than ruby i was like bro because i know python like i learned python <laughs> like that's what that's why I, <laughs> like i know i yeah, i know python like, I just while it's was better like that's hilarious <laughs> that's why and so and so it's bro. interesting it, i don't know it's just i think the in like the i don't know it's it's it, and so those questions and stuff do come up kind of in the system engineering devops world but like i don't know there's a, there's a little more uh there's a little more black and white right and wrong uh, there than there is in the software area. I think you can spin most things in software uh, to your to your advantage. It, again, if you the more you understand um, and the more you're able to discuss it, uh, is is kind of how you do that. But um, yeah, um, and that kind of leads into the the what I think is the biggest uh, thing here for for and this again this is still uh, kind of showing off your technical prowess is learning how to how to speak about what you know. This is uh ability to communicate. It's everything. The, the ability to communicate your your technical skills uh is is it's everything, it's, bro. It is just about everything. Um I I've I've interviewed I've I've sat in interviews with people who I already knew what they could do or what they've done. Um and they did not they were not able to discuss uh or or, or highlight the things that they knew. Um, uh, yes. Can I make the face? Yes, I can. Maybe I can. Let me do that right now. Actually, I can make the face cam bigger, but, um, you need to learn how to talk about what you know. Let me see. So what you're saying, basically, um, I'll let you do this, but are you saying basically like you knew them prior, uh, to the interview and you knew yes. their inability to talk and how it was going to affect them? Yes. Yeah, super zoom. Oh, check. Ooh, that looks good, dude. Fire. That is flames. Oh, they say it's, they say it's muted, bro. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> oh, let me tell him uh, I got you. Going. Not anymore. It's not. Yes, Check me out. On their Boy is back. Goals, bro. Boy is is a back. Oh yeah, is uh. Yeah, can y'all still hear T Bell? Yeah, they can still hear me. Um, I'm glad y'all told me that. Can still hear me. I don't remember yeah, what I was keep saying. Our toes, man. They didn't let a second. Wait, goodbye. but can y'all hear me? That's Nobody can. Love. Okay, cool. We hear both. Now. You can hear us cool. both now. Face cam out here. Um, repping the DM, repping the Damatha. Oh, that's what that meant. I had no idea what that meant, actually. Great school. Uh, you know, the likes of, uh, you know, Markel Fultz, the likes of... Uh, really? Yeah, Markel Fultz. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, who the dude that's about to get drafted number one? Um, my mind just went blank. I um, have no idea. Whatever. Uh, from Ohio that. State. That's you know, these are all, these are all uh, young scholars and gentlemen. It is all boys school. That's why scholars and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, but yes, knowing how to speak about what you know is very important. Um, I got to figure out how to fix the the background for the chat. James here. Wiseman is that him? No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. Uh, um, but it is so. It, it's an art to do that. And how do you, how do you how do you learn how to do that? You learn how to do it by by speaking to people about tech for one, because uh, it it takes some time to learn how to speak about tech um, and how to put it into into the right words uh because i can get, get really tough yeah so um i can give an example um let's say we're talking so this this is uh python this is software uh let's talk about um uh maybe talking about your your hmm this is actually the software is a little bit harder for me i can't think of an example offhand um let's say 
I was trying to showcase my um, my ability to 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 or that I knew um, I don't know about pack about you know my about package management in software and like maybe I knew like I've messed with a couple of languages and I'm like yeah you know I really uh, just to show that I understand dependency management and things like that like yeah I really dislike npm's uh, I really I, I really dislike the way that Node. Uh, uh, handles packages. I find the package.json to be a little archaic and hectic. Um, I don't like the way you lock versions. I don't like the semantic versioning there, um, as opposed to something like Python. And I don't think Python's package management is uh, much better. Um, but I don't know, being able to kind of speak about those things, I, I, that's not even a good one. Um, just because I don't know, um, because I don't have to do it often. I think that I have, it's not an art that I picked up for specifically a software. Um, but for like, for like DevOps and things, it would be like, Hey, like, uh, I'm really good at, or like I, I've done a lot with configuration management and I, I know those configuration management paradigms of, you know, of being able to, uh, codify, uh, different, uh, different infra infrastructure, different, different, um, different environments based on, uh, you know, certain environment variables. I know how to make decisions and make switches, uh, based on, you know, uh, environment variables that are listed or, uh, different parameters that are passed in. And I don't know, it, it's, it's really hard unless someone gives me a good question, but, um, it, it's, it's being able to one, uh, have enough, have enough conversational knowledge about a technology to be able to, uh, to be able to, make decisions and assumptions about it, but also being able to talk about a technology without having to uh, repeat exactly what was given to you kind of in its, uh, in its manual per se. Um, and I think it's, I think it's, I think it's tough. Um, let me see. Let's say I make a website to track a swim workout. So my DB has to store all the data in the files over some basic data visualization. So progress over time what would be a good project to put on my GitHub to help get an interview. Yeah, that would be, uh, yes, you see goodness. That's a good, that is an excellent project to put on your GitHub. Um, uh, one, uh, we'll, we'll talk about, we'll talk about projects in a little bit. Um, and kind of how to choose projects or, or like how to approach project. making projects. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, that, this is actually kind of tough. Um, it is, it's, it's even tough now, but, uh, being able to at least be familiar with the things that you that you know like i think everyone tries to go for an interview and they take a look at all the things that were on the uh the job rec and they start trying to to like pick up little things oh, from i've there. definitely tried to do that i've done yeah, that before <laughs> that's good like yes you should do that but what you really want to do is to go back and make sure you're you're really keen on the things that you do know um you can fill up an interview slot time by just talking about again extending the things out for what, what you know talking about the things that you know um uh, very passionately uh, to be 100 percent honest um it's it's it is a it's a it's a good way to go about things um i think i think people don't focus on what they know enough uh i think we're constantly focused on learning more um, rather than going deeper, kind of where we, where we are and what we're kind of, where we already have some expertise. Um, but yeah, I think you can, uh, I think you can do that. Um, also I'm, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of a good way to say, um, well, if I was trying to say a good way to say it, then I probably would end up saying it the right way. Um, but yeah, just figuring out how to know, figuring out how to say, uh, talk about the things that, you know, is very important. Um, and not even just technical, like not even just technical topics. I think what's also valuable for, uh, interviewers, for companies are the things that you've learned uh, about the processes, difficult processes and things from other companies. Uh, things like, uh, again, like get, like get workflows and understanding kind of those different things and saying, Hey, uh, yeah, I just don't, I'm not really like, not that you need to go memorize all the Git workflows and stuff, but you know, ah, yeah, I worked at a company and we had a lot of trouble with Git, with GitHub flow. Uh, so we switched to GitLab flow because, uh, cause it worked because of this and kind of those, those extra things that are technical, they are technical, but they're more process related things. Um, your understanding of, you know, different software development processes, you know, agile Kanban, all the different, the, the waterfall, things like that, um, are also very beneficial. Um, because if people don't have to teach you about the processes, uh, they like that as well. Um, yeah, Terrence, anything to add on, on how to, how to speak about what you know? 
Um, yeah, definitely. I would say, um, let me think. I mean, I always want to talk about it, like, but I mean, I'm trying to think like, I would say you, you don't want to steer too much to it, like constantly. I think once you talk about it, talk about it, don't go back to it. Cause I think then they notice that, oh, this is all this guy knows. And that can actually come back and, and hurt you. Um, you definitely want to talk about it and be confident about it. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't overkill it, you know, uh, like if they ask you about something and you talk about this one thing and then, okay, that's cool. And that conversation leads where it leads. And then you, you know, they ask you another thing and you go right back to it. That might actually start raising some red flags. I don't think the guy uh, will be rude in the interview. So he, let, he might let you like, you know, continue, but um, I wouldn't beat it over and over again into his head. You know what that's I mean? Fair. Yeah. Um, and I'd also, I'd also, it's it's kind of tough sometimes uh, because you'll you'll get advice from uh, there there are calibers of companies there are calibers of uh, yeah of, uh, there are calibers of software engineers there they they just they just are um, and that doesn't that it doesn't necessarily mean one is better than the other it means that some are required to know a certain level of things that others aren't required to know and so I find that. Um, if you ask certain people, um, what to kind of know in some of these things, you might get the answers. Like, uh, I think a lot of things people get are the fang interviews, the Facebook, you know, Apple, Google, Microsoft, all those people, um, Netflix, they have a very specific interview process. Uh, they one have their pick. Uh, they basically have their pick of, uh, highly educated candidates. Um, and they vet them accordingly. Um, one, because some of the positions do in fact need that, that level of skill, but also just because they have that prestige and that's what they can do. Uh, they do ask a lot of, uh, they ask you to solve a lot of tough problems uh, throughout those interviews. Uh, it's a daunting process that you might go through five or six rounds of interviews uh, for that, but. I got a question about that. Oh, I want to know how you, I want to know how you feel about so I usually avoid these because they're just exhausting. Like yeah, if it's no. more than one day of interviews, I'm just out of there because I'm no. like, you know, you know, in these three, four, five hours, if not, you want to hire me or not. Um, but that's just me. I, that might be me being selfish. I'm pretty sure it's me being selfish. Um, but I'm just curious about your experience. Like, like, is that something that you like you don't mind doing if you really want the job oh, or I'm not like, doing it. So, okay. uh, I've done I've done it I've 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 went through uh, I went through I went through four rounds for a company called Palantir, um, and I actually stopped the interview process because uh, it got that fourth round like everything felt like it was moving along, uh, and that fourth round it was like like it felt like oh you made a miss like basically like oh you made a misstep in step number four so we need to re we basically need to redo that round to like. I don't know to really decide. And I was like, mm, I'm, are you serious? Like, like that's not what they said. That's what it felt like. That's Get what out like, of here, bro. that's the kind of flow and how it went. And um, I definitely was. I, I that was a very um, I don't know. That was a very interesting experience for me. And and, and again, like, how'd you respond? It's each his own, huh? How did I respond? I was just yeah. like, uh, I think they asked for a like when we could have it, and it was like it was like a three hour. They were like three, three hour interviews. What was that? Oh, sorry. That was my headphones. That was weird. I, that was the music messed me up just now. Uh, I thought somebody was my right next got, to me. My man got scared. Um, yeah, I, got, I did get scared. I was, like, I was like, "Am I going to fight somebody?" Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. I, and then I think I was just like, "Nah." I was like, "I can't. Like, I can't do another three-hour interview. Like, I can't take off for a three-hour interview. Like, this is just not something." I don't even know what else I have to show you. I don't have anything else to show you. Like, it felt like I was just being put through, like, it feels like you're being put through, like, like boot camp or something, like, uh, like, like military boot camp. It's like, are you, are you trying to break me first? <laughs> like, is that, that's, that's kind of what <laughs> it felt like. Best. But I get it. I mean, I, I, I understand the, again, the prestige. If you want it, there are people who will go through it so they can do it. Um, they need to weed those people out. Um, they need to, to weed out the people who are going to, you know, stay. They do put out a lot of money for these candidates. Um, and I, I, I understand it now. Does it, is it effective? I don't know. Uh, and it, there must be some effectiveness to it if they still do it. Um, but I think there is effectiveness to it, honestly. Um, I don't yeah. mind three hours, like Bloss Evan said, if it's an hour per person. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, when it spans multiple days, dude, I'm not with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A single, I, I'm, I'm in on a, so I'm in on a, 
here's here's the interview process that I'm okay with, or like the max interview process. I'm okay with doing a uh, one phone screen, one hour, hour and a half phone screen. If um, one uh, like either virtual, uh, yeah, that's cool. Either I'll virtual or or you know another like more technical, uh, like inner like actually more in depth interview. And I'll, I'm willing to do an entire day of uh, a one whole day of in person interviewing. Uh, but I'm not willing. Right. Like, that's that's pretty much my max. Um, I think. <laughs> my max. I think my. I think that's. I think that is. I don't think I used to would have done that much. But again, you also got to think about the jobs you're going for. I'm not looking for a job making half a million dollars like the tech lead. Um, I, I, like that's just that's Very not true. worth it. That's not worth it to me. Um, I don't. Know, it's just not worth it to me. And again, it's it has to do with your area, the types of companies you're going for here in the in the in the DC area, especially with all these government contractors. Again, in software, in DevOps, you can make. <laughs> there are there are tons of companies who will give you six figures for a Easy. phone interview and a two hour in person interview with Easy. no whiteboarding. There are plenty just a phone companies. interview bro. just a phone like, just a phone they interview. don't even care so like, once you realize oh, that man. like once you know what the market is in your area like again if you go to silicon valley i'm sure everything's different um but i've done enough interviews uh to know that there are companies willing to give you six figures for a phone interview and maybe an in-person to just make sure you don't stink <laughs> like that's really what they're checking for <laughs> are they just like this person they, are they smelly like um oh but, you mean actual physically stink <laughs> yeah like physically like they, they're like uh we had our oh, we, man. we had our phone our technical screen they're fine but like let's just come in and just be sure um so i don't know so th that's why i'm not willing to no catfishing to sure. go any farther than that but I'm interested to hear about other people's. Uh, what's the long? What's the longest interviews you guys have been in? Because um, I'm always surprised. I'm, I'm always surprised. Like I know people who've been through eight rounds of interviews. Get out of here, bro! Eight, eight rounds for Silicon Valley company. Again, it's always it's always those Silicon Valley companies, which is wild to me. Um, I'm, I had a uh, well, you're still friends. Uh, my buddy went through. I think he was at Deloitte. I think it was Deloitte, and. Um, he was flying from Georgia, bro. And this was like over weeks. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Definitely. But he got the job, though. He, he definitely got the job. But he had to fly out multiple times. And I'm like, dude, you are, you really want this job. <laughs> and that's okay. So, like, I'm not, I, and I want to be clear, I'm not telling anyone not to do those things at all. Like, I 1000% uh, want everyone to be, I, I think actually everyone should be open to doing these things, um, to, should be open to them. Uh, and I think you should find, you should be able to find your reasons why it makes sense for you or why it doesn't. Like, I really, I, I, some people always are like, nah, you no one should do that. And while, and while, you know, uh, I, 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 I do think companies sometimes take advantage of people in this aspect. I, I also think uh, if you're if you're diving into this, uh, sometimes one uh, you got to do things that are tough to get to certain levels of, of things, um, and these things can pay off sometimes. So I don't want to give I never want to give a blanket statement of no you should not do that do this do this don't do that uh, at all. Uh, I think you got to find what works for you. You got to find you know what what interview process is too much for you. Um, and you got to be able to read it. You got to be able to do your best to start reading it um, and to, to make sure it's making sense moving forward accordingly. Um, and that and that leads into going on hella interviews like that That's is true. the everyone always asks, like, what do I do? Like when I tell you whenever you're ready to get a job or you want to get a new job, flood the market, send out, send out stuff to everybody, like everyone, um, like send send out just go on go on all the websites type in junior engineer type in mid-level engineer send your resume to everything um you'll get you will get callbacks you'll get callbacks um you may not be ready for those callbacks but that those callbacks will be practice um people will ask you questions about things that you thought you knew something about and you'll say you'll give you your really quick yeah you'll give your four lines about what you thought that thing was and then they'll ask you one deeper question and you're like oh i didn't even know <laughs> i don't even know what the words you just said are <laughs> Yo, um, just, yeah so it's so true so go on it's so uncomfortable it is it is extremely uncomfortable i i i i feel everyone on that um i think I said it in the beginning of both of the boot camps. Uh, the one thing I wanted you guys to do is to start to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Uh, that is that is what going on lots of interviews will teach you. It'll teach you to to be like maybe you won't be super comfortable being uncomfortable, but like you'll realize it's not the end of the world, um, and you won't be afraid to be 
and or you'll be less afraid to be embarrassed or to not know what's going on or or for an interview to go poorly. I'm telling you, I've had some awful interviews, but again, I've had I've had awful interviews. And then the same day had an interview that went amazing. Uh, wow. And it, was, and it was more difficult. And it was like the people asked me harder questions, but there were questions that, you know, right up my alley or something like that. Gotcha. So um, for, for similar positions. So again, flood the market. Again, every, every interviewer is going to be different. Um, so again, you might just, a bad interview might just be because the person was having a bad day and, and took their anger out on you, which sucks is bad. But again, where people you'll do it to somebody one day on accident, maybe not in an interview, but you'll take your anger out on someone inadvertently. Um, so things like that, things like that can it'd be someone you just don't mesh well with some, somebody who's, if you guys knew each other, you would be mortal enemies. Um, <laughs> sometimes that happens and that, that is definitely okay. Um, but just apply, apply everywhere. Don't look at the, do not look at the years of experience thing. Like, nah. don't, yeah, ignore, don't look at that. ignore all of it. If I would say, if this is your first job, apply to everything. After that, apply to everything that has at least a couple of the technologies that you care about and that you want to get better at on there, listed on there. Apply to every single one, all of them, every single one. What's up, Sub Zero? Uh, Zub, Sub Zero Ice Star, welcome. I think someone else just joined. I'll see your name when it pops up. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, Aaron. Good to have you. What's up? I got one question. The um, I'm doing some LinkedIn stuff, and um, the the panel tomorrow is at eight, right? The uh, ask me anything. The for panel is a, it's on Wednesday. <laughs> Gosh, it's Wednesday bruh, at eight. Bruh, the, <laughs> Bro, I, the, the days are blending. Don't. Go to academy.mastermind.io. It's on Dude, I did too. I was like, that's not right. This it's can't be Wednesday. right. I was like, I got to ask Aaron. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, the days are blending. I'm not getting outside the house. The days are blending. Um, <laughs> I think so, someone asked about uh, take home. Someone asked about take home projects. I think Adam asked about take home projects. Uh, I, so I actually. I don't like whiteboarding, and then maybe we'll talk a little bit more about it when we get to whiteboarding. I don't like whiteboarding, but I am okay with take-home projects personally. Um, only if they're done in a way that uh, that actually highlights the things that you'll be doing on the job, um, or or highlights uh, a level of uh, of aptitude that 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 will be sufficient for the job that you're working on. My only problem with take-home. Um, one problem with take home assignments or take home tests uh, are that it's t like it's time consuming, consuming man. Yeah. And like people have lives and like people have jobs. And I think the problem with a take home test is that you to kind of get what you need uh, because you don't get the same real time feedback as a whiteboarding session. Yeah, you have to make it a little bit in depth to kind of try to extract the information that you want to extract out of it uh, to have something you can really analyze. And I don't know. I think it's a, uh, I think it's a tough game to play. I think I like, I've had people ask me to do a three out, like a three or four hour take home test. I've had ones that they said, Hey, you need to set aside an entire day for this. Uh, and I was like, I like, I just won't <laughs> like, yo, like, that's, that's a barrier. A lot, man. Like, that's, that's a, that's a, it's a, a big a ass. It's a lot. And again, you're willing to do more. You're willing to do a lot more when you need a job than when you are just looking for something new. Um, that's a hard barrier for a lot of people. Um, it's like, hey, you, like interview process is going great. Now you give me this four hour take home test. I'm not doing it. I mean, I get paid to like you get paid to code. You get paid to do this work. Uh, why would you uh, why would you do that? Uh, I don't know. What's up? Uh, pro program. Appreciate the raid. Welcome everyone from program channel. And actually, how do I turn off the, was it followers off? Oh yeah, you did it earlier. Something. Yeah. What's up everybody from- Thank you. you oh, program. program, thank you, bro. There goes the uh, the pub in the corner. That's her favorite Hey, corner. Maya. She's having a little fun. Look at that dog. Um, the nicest dog ever, bro. She's just hanging out over there. Yo, what's up with them swords right there? What is that? It's bombs. You're raiding. You're raiding. What's up? So Andy Shin, yo, how you guys doing? I got one of those today. I care say Google part of the stub. Give up, send it to them. Didn't get the job. Ah, that 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 sucks. Um, but yeah, so like I think that's I think that's one of my problems with take home exams. But I I do think take home tests are an opportunity 
uh, if you're willing to take it, there are a huge opportunity to shine. One, because uh, there's a level of creativity you can add to it. Um, again, it's a, level, it's, it's a way to shine if you already like understand the stuff. It can be daunting. It can be very daunting if it's a little bit out of your comfort zone because uh, you got to spend time learning to kind of get things up to speed. Um, one, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's hit or miss. It is, it, is, it is hit or miss. I'll do them. I will do them uh, depending on the Bro. length. Huh? Your dog, Block Seven, is like, why is he licking the wall? Bro, she's, she's licking she's, the wall in the funniest way possible. She's she be she be so stressed out. She's <laughs> she's got a little bit of anxiety. She's a really weird girl. Like <laughs> Maya, slow mo, bro. <laughs> chill out. She she's a weird girl, it. like for sure. Oh, that was hilarious. She's okay. She's bored. Um, she's bored right now. But Ooh, yeah. Yes. Uh, someone asked, I think someone also asked about um, uh, the salaries for entry level devs. Uh, for junior developers, uh, this one's this one is uh, Ooh, let's talk tough. About you should look like so area matters. The place you're where you're located in the country matters for sure. Uh, what we see around the DC, uh, DC area, Northern Virginia, you know, over here. Um, I, I'd confidently say, uh, like, I've seen like I've I've only ever met like two devs or seen like two or three dev slots that are less than fifty k. Um, I've seen I've seen a couple at forty five, which is weird, uh, but not recently. Um, I would say ju like if you're a complete junior dev, I would say to expect if you're on the you know I, again depends on where you are, probably but so if wherever you are in the country, probably in between 55, somewhere between 55 and like 85, depending on your, you know, whether or not you have a CS degree and like what, like what level of CS degree, that's, that's kind of the, the probably average, I would say, um, between 55 I, and 85, I think is, is pretty common. Um, what, what would you say? That's interesting. Um, so coming from Georgia, I had friends graduating like a year before me in college and we're getting jobs for like, a, like 35,000. Oh, and yeah. again, that was Georgia. Um, you know, like like Statesboro was kind of a um, kind of a eh, not the boondocks, but it was out there. And um, yeah, man, they would get these jobs at these places that need you know IT support. Um, maybe well, so, not so so that's so so yeah, so so IT support stuff is different. Uh, but yeah, I'm talking about strictly for software. But even software, I mean, it can go, get into the 40s. Um, it was low, like it wasn't blowing my mind, which is why I left Georgia. What was um, your what was your like first job salary fifty thousand dollars bro fifty and let me, yeah that sounds 50. and let me yeah, tell you something but so, right. this is, so this is what but mine was in i i got a job my first one was in fulton maryland and i was living in silver spring so i was living in silver spring driving which it was on like on the uh the outer edge of silver spring and it was like a 15 minute drive and we had a lunch one time and uh the conversation came up about like uh with our HR manager about hiring people. And she told me to our, like to my face, that they purposely pick people from the South because we're cheap. Yeah. School kids are cheap and people from the South are cheap. And I was like, okay, I just got, not God, but dang, like at least she was honest about it, you know? Um, yeah. Cause it's just different down there. Yeah, Cast9 says, yeah, 100K is average in San Fran. Yeah, see, that's what I said. It depends on where you are. I think, like, places like New York have uh, pretty high probably starting salaries. But the barrier for – I think the barrier for entry for those uh, for those junior dev jobs are way different. Like, I, like I've seen <laughs> – I've, I've worked with a junior dev who – was like a was was desk, he was desktop support um and he just applied internally for it and he got it and when i tell you he did not know it, he knew <laughs> nothing. literally nothing about code the day he started i mean and again they, they he had the he had the framework to kind of learn he he did learn he actually did uh, i remember him actually doing pretty good uh there but like i was a sysadmin there um, he was like coming from like the call center almost and he didn't know anything about coding and he was able to get a job I think at the time. I think I asked them they were making like like 46 or 47, uh, which was decent um, That crazy. Yeah, but yeah, King Fido my first was 46. Yeah, didn't realize how low it was at the time Yes, so I always love talking about first salaries <laughs> um, So my first salary was actually at a web hosting company um, working as a like a Linux systems admin uh, But you know that was just a title like we did work in Linux, but we were like web hosting like call center people and they actually taught us linux like we sat down uh, the first six months like we we got paid to learn linux which was nice uh so that's where i know i learned a lot there but i was getting paid 
Uh, first, I was going to pay $15 an hour, um, but I got paid weekly and I was the richest person alive. You cannot, <laughs> you cannot take a kid who isn't even out of From college. Nothing. I wasn't even out of school and start giving them, you know, a couple hundred dollars a week. Like you can never be, I'm, you, I spent four years being broke and like with zero dollars, like you can make it a week being having zero dollars. So like, like I think my first two checks, like I was like, I'm just going to go to, I'm going to go rich. to Ocean City and I'm going to blow it. And I'm going to go here and I'm going <laughs> to blow it because I can be broke for a week. Well, I make it for a week. I'm so used to doing that. Um, but yeah, I was, but so $15 an hour. And then I got moved to, um, when they, when they put me like out of the trial period, I was getting paid like $38,000 a year, um, working in Northern Virginia, living in Baltimore with wow. a Mustang. I had no, I had zero money, but I thought I was good. I thought I was a hundred percent good uh at the time and that's how it just shows you how life puts things in perspective money definitely is not everything uh because i feel uh i don't feel much more uh, wealthy than i did then to be 100 percent honest with you um but yeah that was my that was my first uh that was my first like tech job but it, it, software is a little bit different um software is definitely a little bit different yeah uh so that commute i put uh i put almost a hundred thousand miles on that car um in like two years holy like, smokes yeah, dude in like two years i uh you were driving bro you parked off i-95 for the other day i uh i bought I, I purchased an xbox and i would play xbox at my desk every day uh when i got off until the end so i could miss traffic uh because if i if i left at my normal time i work seven to three if i left at three if i didn't leave right at three if i left at 320 315 320 i it would take me three and a half hours to get home like three to three and a half hours and i had a stick shift it was terrible i would have got a strong left leg but it would have been fun so i just <laughs> strong uh, left leg i would have just had to Screw yeah it would have been pretty bad um that's a weird thing. yeah yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, it was so it was good. Like I said, I had to be there at seven, though. That kind of sucked, but getting there wasn't that bad. I get there in like an hour and 15, hour and 10, hour and 15, but getting home would take me forever. Um, so, yeah, so first salary, like, you know, starting salaries can really range um, depending on where you're located. I, I, I think a pretty safe. Uh, it's a wide range, but I think it's between like fifty like like fifty and eighty five. Fifty five and eighty five for a junior. Yeah, that's dev. Good. And again, the junior um the junior designation can mean a lot of different things at a lot of different places. Um so yeah, that's that's probably what I would say. What I would say though, uh I think the salary question is a great question though. I think people should talk about salary more, uh to be hundred percent honest. If you have I, I consider I mean, most places in the country, most places in tech i think once you're at that mid-level uh and, and i think I, I think mid-level really is like as eh, three three years and up two and a half years and up to be honest um hmm, you, really two yeah. and a half and then you're mid-level that's interesting I, I think so i i think i think two two i think two and a half three years and up you're you're in that mid phase okay i, I guess uh, it depends on, i don't know man it depends on your experience really yeah you know. it, it does it does it I, i've been fortunate enough to work places um, most of the places I've worked, uh, I've gotten they while there. The fire, and you had to learn. Quick. Yeah, they threw me in the fire. Yeah. But I've also worked at places where I did literally nothing for. That's why I left. I went somewhere where I worked. I did literally nothing for six months, and I was like, "Yeah, I gotta go because you're gonna make me unemployable. I'm gonna get too uh, too happy about this, and then you're gonna you're gonna fire me, and I'm not gonna <laughs> be able to get hired anywhere." Um, but. Out man, just about everywhere. When you're in that mid level phase, that 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 three to five years phase, you should be making just about everywhere. You should be real close to that six figure mark, if not above that. Um, I think on my own right, right now. Like when did I start making six figures? Like in software, at least right now. Again, things have changed. Um, the salaries have gone up uh, pretty substantially. Um, I think I, I yeah yes. I, um. I think you can. I think you can be. I think a lot of people start to, they get placed, they get comfortable, uh, and don't. Yeah, four and, and a half. Don't five. move. Huh? Yeah, about, it was about four and a half. Five. About four and a half. Five. Five. Yeah, six figures. But were you cl were you close to that in the place before? How long did you stay at your first job? At your junior job, how long did you stay there? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I had pretty uh, crazy. So I started at fifty. I left at sixty-five, um, and that was in two and a half years. Um, so I was getting raises like pretty, pretty crazy. I mean, that's a, uh, what's that? That's what, 15,000 and, and, and I mean, that's not bad. That's not um, bad at all. It's not bad at know? all. And, and, and it was, a, it was a really good company. They were doing like Christmas bonuses and stuff like that. What Based was that jump there. though? 
What was that first joke? The first joke also, was, oh, what's up? Also, you said Christmas bonuses. How much were your Christmas bonuses? Dude, I was, he dropped like, it was probably closer to three or four grand. Okay. For, and that's like my so first year. A little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, and I was, dude, I was, man, I went up and shook his hand and everything. I was like, thank you, man. <laughs> I was broke, bro. Yeah. I was fresh out of school. I didn't have any money. I was so broke. Um, not much has changed, folks. Uh, but, but, uh, but yeah, man. Um, yeah. Um, the first, oh, the first jump. So yeah. 68, it wasn't, it wasn't great. It was like 65 and then it was 68. Um, you, you, went, so you left to go make 68. It was, it was, I didn't leave for the money. Um, okay, it that's was right. a really bad, it, the good company was good, man. It was a really good company, but it was not healthy. People were getting cussed out. Like I was watching people cry. Um, now, now that was my first one out of college, and it was like, it it really lit a fire under me, bro. Like it, it like talk about getting thrown in the fire. I was uh, um, we I made software um, that uh, simulated uh, torpedo software. Uh, okay. It was a Java GUI, and I made that um, it was just using regular Swing um, SWT stuff out of the Java framework. Um, and it was a torpedo simulator. Don't talk for, to me like that. I don't know anything you just said. <laughs> it was a torpedo simulator. Uh, you said on. as you said a bunch of letters. <laughs> okay, uh, so imagine you have a ship and it's it's just sitting in the water, but actual on top of a real overlay, a real map, um, and then you can like put another overlay over it and see enemies, um, and then you could put another overlay over it and see your your well actually everything all the ships were on one overlay, and then okay. your your weapons were on another overlay. And the incoming targets uh, actually were on that same overlay, so it was just different overlays and stuff like that. And um, long story short, I made that application. Um, it, it really stretched me, man. I was working. That's that was in two and a half years. My first job when I was working like 60, 70 hour weeks every week for like straight, bro. Like I was just going, man, because you know when you're out of college, you're hungry, and you want to like you want it so bad, so. So Some I was just, do. I was just, I was like, and several times the CEO of the company would like come find me and was like, you're the hardest working person we have. Like he would literally come find me, bro, at my That's desk. And I was like, I just want to keep working. I don't even want to, <laughs> I don't even want to have this 15 minute meeting. Um, but yeah, man. Um, so anyway, it was a good company. Um, but I was also watching people cry. Uh, people get cursed out. It was like, why the F isn't this done? Why, you know, it was like that kind of stuff. Um, and it, like a lot of my jumps earlier weren't that big. The biggest one was, it was like 65, 68, 75, and then it was like 100. Um, How many places have you been? Uh, let's see. One, two. Well, one place I got laid off. Um, I walked okay. in one day, which I don't even count because it was only nine months and I would have stayed a long time, but I walked in one day and people were crying and I was like, what is happening? It was right after Labor Day, bro. I never forget. And they they like laid off like thirty people that day, bro. They had like a bunch. They thought they were gonna win a, a recompete on a contract. This is when I was still doing government work, and they didn't. And I knew something was up because they told us to take an extra day they normally wouldn't <laughs> tell us to take. So they're like, "Oh, don't worry about coming in this day. Uh, you know, just just enjoy time with your families." And then the next day we go to work, and boom, thirty Yikes. people done. That is unfortunate. So I probably, it's probably like, I would say like four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. What about you? I, um. (laughs) How many companies, bro? Uh, my first job, I went from, my first job was 38. Uh, I, I stayed there for a year. Uh, and I, I went went from 38 to 55. Uh, then I got a job. That's pretty good. I got a job at the same time I was at concurrently with that next company. So I mean, I was making 55 there. I got a second full-time job making 60. Uh, so I was working both of those at the same time. It was, uh, it was, I did it for a reason and it was miserable, uh, but both companies were pretty cool. Um, and then I left both of those to go make 68. Um, and then I left that job to make 75. Uh, and then I left that job to make a hundred and I went from a hundred to one, like 15. And nice. then, yeah, then like 115. I've taken a couple a couple jumps since there. Really, since I've been a fearless, I've taken a couple jumps since I've been there. But uh, but all, some of those were like six month moves, uh, just because of the way things went. Um, nice. But yes, but like 
Yeah, it was, those were those were they were they were very interesting jumps. L luckily, none of them were. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to avoid. Uh, <laughs> I've had I've worked at a couple companies that laid people off after I left, um, but I've been fortunate enough to avoid that so far. Um, hopefully, I continue to. To be 100 percent honest, that was a good that was a good question. Uh, let's get back to some of the the, the interview stuff, uh, and then we can answer some more of the the day to day questions. I, I got your question there, Smeeter, about uh, how many hours we can expect, but. Um, back to the interview stuff. Uh, I think it's important because everyone focuses again on the technical piece, and all, I think I think all the information for the technical stuff is out there. You do um, it does help to again learn the different types of algorithms and just get comfortable with solving problems. I think the more problems you solve, the easier it is to hop into an interview and know how to at least start to tackle a challenge. Because again, you pick up the little tools and you know which tools to pull out of your tool bag to start to dive into a problem. I know people uh, who, like my brother-in-law, he's in software. He actually was like, I prefer, like give me just give me a coding challenge because uh, I would rather show you that than to have to try to wow you. Um, you know, and, and I get that. I just certainly understand that for sure. Um, but some two places you can win. And again, these are hard. This is not for everyone. Uh, some people are great at the, at the tech side of things and not very good at the being likable. Um, and they're not, they're not, they're not exclusive. It's not one or the other at all. Um, or, um, or some people just aren't good at showing a thing and work with people either. But those are two very important pieces. Like trying to be likable can, I don't think that, I think trying to be likable is number three. Um, I think to be hundred percent honest, like I think that could be number three. I think most people will um, allow. Wait, are you doing priority listing right now? I am doing priority listing. Uh, I, I, I got the three with that. I I I I think it's number three. Um, I think that um, showing that you are a that you can that you can be a fit that you that you can work with the team um, that you, that you you know can be a good coworker. I think is number one. I think your technical prowess is number two. I think your likability is number three. And Again, I want to be clear that there's a difference between uh, there's a difference between that communication and and showing someone your your you, that you can be a fit uh, and being likable. So being I, I the difference to me between those two is being likable are uh, those intangibles that um, don't have anything to do with the job. Just your uh, it's and it's more than just your like overall demeanor as well. Um, I don't know. I, I think there's so many different things that can go into it, but I don't think they are the same. I don't think they're the same thing. Uh, but yeah, you, you feel like they're opposite. Um, I would. Well, I wouldn't put it last. Um, again, I really think that is an important thing. Um, likeability. I mean, just don't go in there trying to be something you're not. Um, you know, I think we're all we all got gifts. You know what I mean? And if you just be yourself. Um, I, how do you, you know, perfect that and get better at that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I would just, I don't know, Google it, I guess. But um, just you really want to just know your strengths as a person and go into the interview like that. Um, you know, just be yourself. And I think that comes with, that will promote you to be more calm and not anxious because you're within your own skin. You know, times you get nervous is when you're, uncomfortable because you're 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 trying to be something you're not or you're trying to be outside yourself and i think that's when you start forgetting things you know and you know it's just be yourself and then i think everything else flows from there so to you it's, to me it sounds like to you uh being yourself uh feels synonymous with being likable well you think there's some uh non like well there's definitely <laughs> non likable people out here i mean I, I i absolutely and i think this is something you have to be real with yourself what everyone has to be real with themselves on again your strengths and your, your strengths and but your weaknesses don't don't be if you are an asshole um and you, and you know that people generally don't either get your humor or something until they know you don't i don't be yourself <laughs> I, i'm like but, i'm serious no, no, no. okay i would i would counter that though i would say <laughs> i would say um, be yourself, even if you're an asshole because, or a butthole, I'm sorry, we weren't cursing. Um, be yourself because if you come in there acting nice when you're not, how long are you going to keep that up on the job? Then they're going to see this total switch a enough in behavior. to get and a few paychecks. Like, Yo, get out of here. <laughs> you got to be, because even if they hire you and you're an asshole, it was like, well, he was an asshole from the jump. So it's yeah. better. You know what I mean? You I got to be yourself, man. I, 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 so yeah, I hear you. I, I think I agree with you if you are just trying to find a good place to work. But if you're trying to get, if you need to get a job, uh, 
uh, look, and I want to say, don't be yourself. I think there's a way, like, I think, I, I hope that there's a way to be yourself without being an asshole, but <laughs> I, I would hope. Um, no, nah, I agree. I, I agree with that. Um, I definitely, I, I do agree with that. Um, uh, I just do think, I think that, I think that, uh, we've done a weird, I think that we've done and this. I, I've had other people tell me this is a weird, uh, a weird outlook, but I think we've done, uh, a, a lot of like telling everyone that, Oh, like however you are is is okay. Is like who you are is who you are. I disagree. Um, <laughs> I disagree. I, I really do. Uh, I, I think there's things everyone can work on. I don't think everyone is. Uh, everything that you do, everything that you that you're into that you do, isn't healthy. Um, so I just I just I caveat. I think I caveat with that. I think I go into things with that mindset when I'm saying these things. Is like, hey, like everyone's got their flaws. Like everyone everyone has their flaws. Uh, if if your flaws are a major part of your personality, um, I don't know. Uh, be be cognizant of those things. Know again. Know your strengths and weaknesses. Know know what things people like about you and what don't. Uh, what they don't. And again, the way that you figure that out is start doing some interviews. You might think there's something that's great about you, and no one responds well to them. You, <laughs> you can find you can find those things out. Um, you can find those things out in an interview. Don't don't change who you are at the core, but I think you can change how you present the package. Uh, how you present yourself. Ah, I like that. That's a good uh, Present yourself as a, as a package. Uh, you can, you know, some people don't like wrapping paper with, pinch, with stripes on it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's all, that's all I mean by that. Um, yeah, that's all I mean like by that. that. I, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I definitely, <laughs> where did I go? I, I was, I went somewhere where the first time I met the people, I had my hair, I had my hair uh, braided back. Um, and then I came back, I think I saw them again with my hair down and like the lady actively was like, mm, I don't like that. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> like, it wasn't for an interview. It wasn't, it, wasn't for, it wasn't for an interview, but it was like, it was like for like, it's just, again, it's, it's all that, but in a way you care or not it, like that, like that's, that's on you. Like, I don't really care about, about that. But like, again, that package, that, 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 what people kind of expect, what gets some people, what doesn't get other people, um, I don't know. You got to play that. You got to play that game, uh, the likability game. It's, just, it's it's like dating. It really is. It, it's, it, I find it, I find it to be like courting another person. Um, Absolutely. It definitely is. It's you very much to, like courting. Yeah, exactly. You're, and you're not always yourself when you're courting someone else. <laughs> like, you know, you're not always your true, like, sometimes it'd be like, man, I don't care about your day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, right oh. now I'm tired. Uh, but now I'm joking. I'm just messing around now. Uh, definitely <laughs> uh, I'm 33 now. I'm on my second year of comm side degree uh, after changing careers. What are oh, your nice. guys' thoughts on ageism in the tech industry? Is it a thing? Yes. Flat out. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, yes, it is. Absolutely. Ageism, it is. ageism is absolutely a thing. It's a industry. thing for real. And I think it's, it's a problem. Um, yep. It's a problem. So, I hate it, dude. I hate it. It's a, it, So I will say, though, I will say uh, it is. So it is a problem. But it's also fed by uh, it's a problem that's also exacerbated by uh, but not 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 the reality of of what people of a certain age can do. Uh, what it, it's exacerbated by what the industry was uh, versus what it's become. Um, and I think that's that's something that does feed into it. I can't I mean, we've had I've, I've interviewed a, a number of 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 older people who well not not even old this thing it's not even that much older but people who appeared to be in their late 40s early 50s um who were obviously very keen on the things that they knew like very keen but had zero uh knowledge of kind of the new direction tech has taken um and so i think that feeds into it um which is not is i mean it's bad it, it is definitely bad, but um, I don't know. I think there's been some weird, uh, this so yeah, it's it's super weird of the of the insights people have about about older people and like what what they can do. I would say 33 is not old. <laughs> um, I would say that. I would say that you will. I don't think that's just something you'll be affected by at all. Um, I mean, I, I'm interested to know: Are you experiencing that at your, at, at, like, in your degree program? I don't think you'll experience uh, any of that now, um, but I do think it's a thing. I think it will go; it'll get better uh, as kind of, you know, the mid level, the mid age, the middle age engineers are getting older, um, and I think we'll start to see older people 
um, you know, in the space doing the things that we think are, you know, cool and trendy. Um, so I think it'll change, but ageism is absolutely, it is absolutely a thing in tech. Uh, it, it really, I, I, I've, I've seen it everywhere I've been, to be honest. Um, I've seen it in some, in some form or another. Um, I, but I, I, but I all, I will also say, um, I, it, it, it's always interesting. Yeah, I'm reading um, these chats. Yeah. It's, it's always interesting how, so we, we hired a, uh, we hired an older, we had an older scrum master, uh, for our team. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's very interesting on how, like, you one, know, I thought about that immediately. Yeah, 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 no, I mean, but now that was a whole different game. Like that was a whole, that was a whole different. different. Yeah, yeah. That, that was that was way different. Like that was like she literally didn't do anything at all. Like ever. I don't think it helped. Like, though. It, it didn't help. It didn't help. But like that's fine. Um, it was more. It was more of a the like the conversations that like we, we would always have a conversation about something and like it's it's so interesting because you're used to uh, like our team is actually made up. Our team is actually made up of a group of very interesting people. Like very unique interesting people and like the just the uh, the 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 vast age difference i mean i think i think she was probably uh about 25 years older than everyone than anyone on the team um and her like yeah her 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 input was so it was so interesting and i think it was so jarring it's so jarring to like you kind of know what the people like we've we become so uh the environments have become so relatively like age homogenous like that you kind of expect to know what people are into or what people are going to say about certain things and she would bring up stuff and we were like man look i don't even know what that is and she would give us whole little uh <laughs> little lessons about what something was and we were like man that's that's super interesting um oh, no. but no i mean what what, do, what do you guys think have, have you guys seen it like i at least so again everyone's experience is different and my experience in the industry so far ageism is for sure a thing um I, but again, like I said, I think it'll get better um, as, as you know, you know, the people who were 30 in the industry, you know, 10 years ago, they're getting older and like, everyone's getting older. I think that um, I think that'll change. But I, again, I think it, it, it comes from I think, I think it's it also the, go ahead. I think it's the spirit of that person, too. Like I've, I've worked with some really uh, oh God, I hate to say really old now, but some older people um, who, you know, had grandkids, they were like in their 60s. And they're like, you know, database admins or, or just really senior software engineers. And, you know, the energy that they have and the energy that they bring, they're cracking jokes. They're, you know, they're, 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 you know, having fun at happy hour. They're doing like, they're showing pictures of their, like, it's, it's, if they bring a lot of energy, then you don't even like, I, I, I find that it's less harsh um, from other people on them when they actually like have that good energy than, than, um, than not. Um, the energy matter. Yo, Maya's going off. What is happening? Uh, she was like scratching herself. She wants love. I'm tired. <laughs> she won't go to sleep. Yeah. No, nah, I mean, yeah, it, it's a thing. I, I think it's a thing. I literally just stopped talking and started staring at Maya. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Yo, it don't make no sense. She can't. The problem is she, she wants to scratch herself. She wants to scratch herself, but her leg, uh, like I said, her leg's messed up. Oh, um, that's right. So she's has trouble like she probably loves it when you scratches it for her too. Yeah, I don't know where she wants to be scratched, but she wants oh, to be scratched somewhere. She had an itch. Um, yeah. So that, that was a good question. Um, I, there's there's definitely uh, I, I I don't discriminate on age. I I really I don't. Where'd that come from? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I don't. Uh, I will. Uh, so it, interestingly enough, um. We, really funny. We did have a we did have an older guy come in. He was he wasn't that old, um, but he was probably like he was probably like ah uh, he was probably like mid forties, um, and so we were like ah oh, super hyped. Like we thought he was gonna be a great like technical lead. Man, he was like he walked in with the confidence of like he knew he was the greatest person for this job, and we got two minutes into the interview and like we realized he was like he knew. The stuff he knew, he he had been working somewhere for twenty years, and he only knew that stuff. Um, and it was it was very disheartening. Uh, so it was funny because the guy who was interviewing with me was like a higher up in the company, and he was he was older, and he we, it was the most uncomfortable situation because he was like basically like stopped him in the middle and like started to explain to him like, look, man, like I'm looking out for you, but you know you need to 
I, I, I can tell you really think you got it under control, but you need to go back to the drawing board and start to learn some of these things. If you need help, we're here to help you. But like, this ain't it. And I was like, oh no, this is. Wait this a minute, is, that was in the interview? Yep, that was, I'll never forget. I'll never, I'll, oh, never, I'll never. No. That was That was my very first, it was my very first time interviewing anybody. And it was at Fearless. And it wasn't, so the conversation only went that way because the guy really was like, he was like really getting like aggressive, like, because we were asking questions, he just wasn't answering them, and like it was weird. It was a really weird thing. It was well, see, that's weird. why that's why I think it's important to get like um, Jay Rogers had a comment. That's like someone can have ten years of experience or one year of experience ten times, and that's why you can't get pigeonholed at these jobs because you get in there and you start doing something and it's fun, and then three year four, year five, year six, and they're not switching technologies, they're not getting better, you're not learning, you're not improving. And you'll just get stuck in that job for 15 years. And then you'll try to get another job and then that will happen. Yeah. So I, I I, I mean, you don't have to switch jobs, but I guess just, uh, you can do that stuff on your own. You just gotta constantly learn in there, really. <laughs> That's ten, crazy. 10 years of experience or one year experience 10 times. Yeah, I, I, that is that that is true. And I, again, I think some of those things feed into, I think some of those things feed into the ages of thing, which makes it worse. It's just like, like, people live during a different time when it was get a job, pick up these skills and it'll be valuable forever. Um, and there, I think there, I, so like, I think, I think to tackle any problem like this, you do have to take a look at the, the things that kind of back it. I think I, I, like that is a sentiment. Um, the sentiment of, of I, I have some seniority. Seniority used to be a big thing. It's not nearly as big of a thing now. Like that, that, uh, you know, the hierarchy is not really as much of a, a thing right anymore. Um, so things like that, I think make it difficult for older people, like for older people. And I, I'm thinking of people in their like 50s and 60s. Um, like I would say mid to late 50s and 60s. I think before that, I think, um, I think you could do pretty good. I think people like uh, wise neck beards, uh, with, with with gray hair, um, I think I think it's cool uh, to be honest. Even though you could be bald instead, <laughs> or uh, or 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 maybe you took care of yourself. Most I didn't. I'm not gonna take care of myself at all. Um, so, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's a thing. It's a thing. So I think that was a good question. Let Papa Smurf. I'm in. I'm in on that. Um, so uh, how can you? How can you, Terrence? Let's talk about some ways to. Uh, to highlight that, uh, like how to, ways to highlight your personality or ways to ways to become likable. I do think it's important, even though I think it's number three. Um, I do think there are some ways to be likable. What what are some things uh, that you think you can do to be likable? Um, like I think I think um, being able to somehow tie in the conversation to uh, the things that you like to do outside of tech. Um, I, I, for some reason, it feels like to me people. If people I've interviewed like think that I want to hear that all they do is code and in their free time all they want to do is make projects. I don't want to hear that. Like I don't. I don't. That's that's boring. Like what do you like to do? What what do you like to do outside of work? Like, I think being able to tie in some things you're passionate about. I think people like to hear passion about something, and I think it's hard to be passionate about something like really be passionate about something you're not really passionate about. Um, so I think that's one way you can you can do it. Do you, uh, you, like. What are some ways, Terrence? You're just naturally good at talking to people, so I wonder what some uh, what some ways you have are of uh, of kind of highlighting, making yourself likable. Uh, he said, "I'm gone." You there? You left me hanging. I was talking to nobody. Hurt my heart. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think that's one. Um, use bro as a variable name. I'm in. I'll do it. It's the best variable name. Um, you like jujitsu? That's dope. Um, I've never done, I want to do a martial art. Um, I kind of want to do a martial art now. Um, it, it would be cool to practice a martial art, but obviously we can't cause of, of, of Rona. Rona's keeping us in the house. Um, wine. That's dope. See, like exactly like who came on, uh, Mike, like Michael yesterday. I don't know if anyone was watching last night, but, uh, Michael Jenkins, he works at Disney. Um, he was on. He's a uh, site reliability engineer at Disney, and he was like, "Yo, I'm in the, I'm in the like making, making drinks, making mixed drinks. Like I'm in that, you know, alcoholic beverages and practicing making those things. That's pretty dope. Like I really, really like stuff like that. So wine is cool. Um, so I would definitely, I, I, like, figure out. I, I would take some time to figure out what those things are. Even if you're the most boring person in the world, find something that is." Um, relatively 
uh, interesting, uh, be able to share those things, but also like be interested in other people, uh, other people's experiences and like ask questions like, oh yeah, like that's what I like to do. What, what, what do you, even if it's not specifically about the person interviewing you, find out about what the people do, uh, ask about what the people do around. Like, oh, well, you know, some of the people on the team that I'm gonna be working on, what do they like to do? Um, I don't know. Those are just yeah. interesting conversations that can kind of, uh, that can kind of spark some of that connection. I think mm -hmm. a lot of it is trying to build the connection through likability. Um, you back? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. Oh, yeah. I had to get some water. And <laughs> oh, yeah? You just got water, huh? <laughs> I had to use the... Yo, I thought about that, too. I was like, yo, I was like, I got to... When it was happening, I was like, I wonder, can he hear me? And I was like, no. <laughs> Do you know... Um, I was I was asking yeah, if you knew any... Uh, I was like, you're 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 a pretty likable guy. You're pretty good at making people like you. Like, do you have any tips on like what to do to to kind of be a little more likable in an interview, or how you can kind of like I don't know, kind of start creating that connection uh, um, during an interview? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, um, again, that goes back to what I said earlier about really being yourself and being com being comfortable and confident. Um, you know, I, I'm just really comfortable in myself. And it, that just, I think that goes outside of uh, a job interview. Um, like even when I talk to people, I, you know, I, I'm from the South and it's just really like, you know, you say hi to everybody. And I think that actually helped me a lot growing up in Georgia, like 20 years ago, I moved up here. Um, it's a different type of, um, it's just a different type of mindset, I guess. Um, you know, that, that hospitality thing. And it just really stuck with me even when I came up here. So um, me just being myself and, and, uh, and and not being scared to mess up and not being scared to fail in front of people helps too. Um, you can't be, like, if you don't know something, you don't know it. Um, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 not the, it's not a big deal. Um, and I think in interviews, that's like the, the thing we all worry about. Like, oh, what if they ask me something I don't know? And Maya is yeah. adorable. Like, what is happening, bro? <laughs> Yo, she has issues. People don't believe me. That I girl, have to like girl. look away from the camera to issues. like talk. Look at this face, yo. She need her own Twitch. Like, she's bored. Her. Like she's she's bored. She's she's like, can you please stop streaming? <laughs> uh, okay, whatever. Bro, I love it. Oh man, but um, I don't even know what I was saying. Uh, God, dude, I totally forgot what I was saying, man. Um, other than like just being you know comfortable and confident. Um, oh yeah, if you mess up, I, I think we. Our biggest fear is they ask me something I don't know in an interview. And that's not the biggest fear. Um, if you fail, there will be more interviews and there will be more interviews and keep that in the back of your head and let those nerves calm down a little bit and then show your true personality. Even if you're a, a, an ass, um, just show your true personality, man. They either connect with you or they don't. And at the end of the day, you want them to like you for who you are than, than, than some phony person or some persona you're trying to put on. Um, Cause then it, it's gonna work you know, hopefully for the long term. Um, yeah. yeah, so just, yeah, be yourself, man. You guys, you guys in this chat are like, I, like you guys are funny to me. Like you guys, I think you guys are fine. Like I think if y'all just be yourselves, um, if this, the chat comes out in your personalities in life and just talking to people, you guys will all have any job you want. Like it's, you know, it's, I, I'm laughing all the time at these chats, uh, it's, it's hilarious. So yeah, man, just be yourself. So um, and I think everything starts from there. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. I think, but I do think it takes, it takes time and it takes practice to be able, I, I keep picking up random stuff. This is, sorry. Um, but <laughs> I think um, it takes time to get there and you'll be able to show more of yourself uh, the more confident you are in your technical abilities. Yeah, they, they do kind of feed each other. Um, at least at least I find for both myself and the way that I've seen people kind of grow as engineers um, and, and, you know, through you know, through their, through their process is it, you know, you, you will be more comfortable to share, uh, more about yourself and to open up a little more when you are more confident in your technical abilities, you're not worried about that piece coming up. Um, and so, um, I think that, again, I think that comes out of interviewing a lot, uh, cause then you start to know, you start to learn the things that you are weak at and you can start digging into those things. Um, and you just, you just start to know what kinds of questions will be asked. So you're not surprised by much to be a hundred percent honest, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think the, the, like they, they go hand in hand to be honest, but I do think trying to be likable is, is important, but not, I think so. I think it's the last, the last thing on there. Get your, get your tech, right. You can wow. The, like 
I, I will say this, if you're not confident in your tech, but you have a great personality and you know how to use it, use it. That is a, it is a skill. You could make that your number one. Um, you could definitely make that your number one. I can't tell you how many times we've had, we've had people come in an interview and it's like, uh, they're not good. For, they are not good for this particular position. We got to find a way to get them in here. Like we have to find a way to get, uh, to get this person in. Um, and we'll do that. 30 y'all. That means who's old. I'm not old. <laughs> Yo, what are y'all talking resist. about? I was hoping you weren't gonna see it too, bro. I am 30's the hill. I agree, man. 30 30's the hill. I just whew. it didn't look steep, brother. I oh was, man. I was good until well, first off, you're over the hill. Terrence is uh first of all, old. I'm not over the hill. I'm 32, dude. I'm like two feet in front of you, son. That man is on two feet death. in front of you, bro. He's on his deathbed. <laughs> oh my god. That man is old. I'm joking. I am joking. Um but yeah. And then maybe the last thing we'll talk about, I mean, there's a lot. There's a, we'll, we'll answer some questions. There were some a lot of questions that weren't specifically about the interview process, but whoa, that was weird. What just happened? Um, you like burp sneezed. I like, I like, I like snorted. Um, <laughs> Yo, you did, bro. That was weird. So whiteboarding, um, don't clip that. <laughs> um, whiteboarding, we've done a little bit of whiteboarding. So the way that we approach those algorithms is exactly how you can approach whiteboards. This is the scariest, of interview techniques, scary to interview topics. Again, I don't think people utilize whiteboarding properly. I think it can be used as a good tool. I think people just pick a random problem that they feel like a software engineer of this level should be able to solve, which is not true. Um, I don't think it's true. Um, and from what I've seen, I think studies have shown that uh, the way that it's done is not really good. Um, but whiteboarding. You can, again, show a lot of your personality. You can show a lot of your uh, non-technical, not non-technical, tangible abilities through whiteboarding, uh, whether you know the answer to the problem or not. Um, I think you can, I, I don't think you can be good at whiteboarding without practicing it. I don't think you can be good at whiteboarding without trying to solve random problems around the Internet. I just it's just something that requires practice. It just it really is something you can't. I, I think it's difficult to just get out there and do. Um, so you, you know, about exorcism.io try to try to do all the problems on there. Try to go to hacker rank, try to do all these things. Again, it is not important that every day you're solving one of these things, but like learning the process of getting comfortable with seeing a problem you've never seen before, reading through it, learning how to break it down, uh, and solve that problem is good. And showing that process your process of breaking things down is more so what the whiteboarding is about than you getting to the end goal everyone thinks it's about solving the problem it's about you getting to that uh, it's about seeing your thought process about getting to the end goal so when you get that whiteboard problem the first thing you should do is not start coding uh you should use the opportunity to read through understand comprehend what's being asked of you uh and break it down any way that you want if you've got to draw some boxes all right this this is uh I feel like we need more uh What's that? next song. The, the the music it was it was uh killing me. But um if you need to draw some some you know certain buckets of things to help you start to visualize and help you start to uh solve this problem, you should go ahead and do that. Like uh, this is your opportunity to run through that. It's your opportunity to ask questions as well. If you're not sure if you're allowed to do something or if you can do this or that, ask about that. Um if you're unsure about aspects of the question, make sure you get clarification on that. Um, but it can really be a conversation. It doesn't have to be them sitting there watching you go through this problem. Uh, but break it down. Show all the processes. Show how your brain works. Show how you can get to that end goal. Um, and then, you know, start with the, I would say start with some pseudocode, especially if you have no idea how to write it in real code. Um, again, the logic is what's more important than the syntax. So if you're like, okay, to do this, I don't know how to, I don't remember the syntax for writing a for loop, but hey, I've got this information here and I know that I need to iterate through it. Um, I know that there's, I know I can loop through these things. Don't really remember the syntax right now. Um, because I use my code editors autocomplete and I'm used to kind of using that, but I know that I can iterate through this information to kind of get to the end goal. You can, you can write those things out. You can draw a little circle with the, you know, a little arrow to show that you're doing a loop, um, and show how you're going to go through all the data that's over here in this collection or something, um, to kind of show that. So it's, it's okay not to know how to, it's okay to not know how to actually, you know, code it. The whiteboarding is an exercise in problem solving. Um, I've, I've gone through, I've gotten a job for a, a in, for an interview where they asked me where I said, I told them that I knew Ruby, that I, that I knew enough Ruby to, to script in Ruby. They, I, but that was like the last item on my resume. And I, 
I only wrote that on there because I had done a couple scripts in Ruby, but I Googled my whole way through all of them. Didn't remember any Ruby at all, uh, almost at all. And the one language that I did not know very well, they asked me to whiteboard in Ruby. And I was like, hey, honestly, I don't remember any Ruby syntax right now, but I was able to work through it logically um, and work through it with the coding paradigms that I know exist. So again, I, you know, I, I understood, I understood variables, I understood loops, I understood conditional statements, things like that. And I was able to work through logically through the problem without writing any Ruby on that board at all. I actually didn't even write any pseudocode. I drew a bunch of arrows and showed me solving the problem and they were down for that. They were said, that's great. You know how to get to the end goal. We believe that you uh, have the aptitude to do this job uh, because I also did some, I showed them like my GitHub has some stuff in it, some, a bunch of custom scripts that I had written to do some cool stuff. It was a systems engineering job. so. That's all we really needed, but um, they offered it to me. I didn't take the job actually, but uh, I was able to. I was able to get it. So um, I've done that in a couple other whiteboard interviews as well, though. Like, didn't actually write any code. Um, just wrote down uh, and really illustrated my steps to getting to the end goal. Um, and that, and that seems to be okay um, for in my experience so far. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it seems like mainly care about the correctness of suit of your pseudo code. Yeah. Yeah, like pseudocode, pseudocode can for sure pass you that whiteboarding uh, interview for sure. Um, yeah, I agree with that. Pseudocode so, works. Yeah, so you don't need to, so like, yes, whiteboarding is, I think, the most frustrating of all things that you would have to do in an interview. But again, once you kind of pull it away from, oh, I got to write code on this board to, all right, I got to work with them to solve this problem. I just need to show them how I would solve this problem. Go ahead and do this. Talk out loud. Like talk. Like talk about you know. First, I think I want to do this and say like, mm, you know, I, I I think that I could do this next, but I'm not sure. Let me put a little marker over here to kind of place hold where I'm at because uh, I want to try this other way first. Um, and talk through that. Talk through that out loud. Show them your process. Um, I don't know. I, I, I've done. I've probably done. I've probably done 15 in-person whiteboard interviews and. Um, Man, that's a lot, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, oh. So no one ever believes me, but I I went on a run, man. I'm telling you, my after I got that second that those two concurrent jobs after I had those two jobs at the same time, confidence. Went, uh, well, not even confidence. I got I had both of those jobs, and I wanted to get a single job that made me like somewhere in but like splitting the difference. Um, and I started interviewing places and I was not qualified. And because I had the safety of those jobs, I just was going on interview after interview. I was applying for everything. Uh, and it was a, such a good learning experience. I went on, I, I, I went on dozens of interviews. Like, I, I'm not even joking. Like no one That's ever believes me, but dude. like, it was very exhausting. Um, but I, I, during that process, this was over, this was over like a four month time span. I, I'm not even joking. I was doing like, I was doing like four to five interviews a week. Um, not all in person, um, definitely not all in person, but it was, it was, it was crazy. It was wild. Like I was going on a bunch and I learned so much through that process because again, people would ask me, I'll be in an interview. Someone would say, oh yeah. Like, uh, do you know, like, yeah. Can you tell me about, um, you know, your experience with Jenkins? And I'll be like, man, I worked at a place that used Jenkins. I don't know anything <laughs> about it. <laughs> I'll put it on there because I work there. Um, and then I will go. So I would say, darn, the interview didn't go great. And I would go back and I'll watch five videos about Jenkins to get a conversation off about it. I knew what problem it solved. And I'm like, oh, dope. Like, I can talk about this now. And then I'll go to another interview and I will kill the Jenkins talk. And I will kill the, the next yeah. talk. And then I would, and then they would ask me about some new technology or, uh, or some old technology that I just didn't have any familiarity with. And again, it's okay to say, you don't, I don't know. Um, but even if the interview went well, I would, I would take that back. I would write it down every single time. I'm like, oh, like, uh, yeah, the, it, what, what was that? Can you repeat what that was? You know, I don't remember that. I need to go, I really want to go back and look that up. Um, find out some information about it and that's honestly what i would do i i would i would go back and i would mm. do those things and then i started crushing interviews that i was not at all equipped Qualified to do like i knew how to talk about the stuff really well like i really want to talk about the stuff but i never used the stuff i never solved any problems with the stuff. Man. so i so one of those jobs in there i ended up getting i was i got it i killed that interview and i got there and it was out of my league. <laughs> really? I started looking for new jobs in the second struggling. month. Yeah, like yeah. I was, and so and so. I, I wish I would have stayed um, for longer. So much. I would have grown so much because uh, it was not. 
yeah, yeah. It, it was, I learned a lot. I, I did learn, I, even in that little bit of time, I learned a lot, but I got out of, out of there in like in like six months, six or seven months, because I was afraid to get fired. Um, cause there wasn't, the problem was, it was really fast paced, and there wasn't a lot of support. Um, we did some cool stuff, but like no one had availability to like help coach me through some of those things. So, um, so I'm, I'm curious actually, um, what would you say would be the criteria for putting something on your resume? If you like, say if you work, um, at a company and y'all have a tech stack and you don't touch everything in that stack, but you touch maybe half of it. Should you, should the person just put their actual experience? on that resume or should they just listen? Do, do I, I, I've changed my whole tune on this. Do not put it on your resume until you can say at least three sentences about it. Okay. Like three meaningful sentences about the thing that you either did or about that product or tool. Um, I, 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 I gotcha. used to say, I used to say, hey, if you've touched it, put it on there. I, I don't agree with that anymore. Um, I think you need to know what it is and what problem it solves before you put it on the resume like even if you've never done anything with it i think if you know what it is and what problem it solves and if you could if you know how to orate that if you know how to say that um i i say then put it on the on the resume got um, you or even or if you don't know what problem it solves or, or like what it's for but you did stuff with it put it on there as well because like if you actually did meaningful things with it uh it's okay to talk like you can, you can just talk about those experiences um like hey i worked on this team and we put this thing together to solve this problem it took us this long um something like that so yeah i i i, I that's 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 the cutoff for me now and i used to like i said i used to put i would drop all the buzzwords on my resume um <laughs> And because of that, and because because I did that, I would get wrecked in interviews because people would ask me about what's on my resume. Like, oh, dope, we're looking, we we've been looking into this container thing in the Docker. Uh, tell us about your experience with Docker. I'm like, bruh, I <laughs> no, you didn't. God. Don't know, Yo, man, even how to start this conversation. This was like years ago. This was like like this was like years ago. Or like, I, again, I put Ruby on there, and they asked me to. They asked me to do the whiteboard in Ruby because like they were using Ruby on some team, but not other. It was weird, man. Like people have asked me about a lot of stuff. That's why I ended up getting that storage. Uh, the, the one where I closed that computer was it was that guy asking me all those storage oh, that's questions. That's a good, good story. <laughs> such I, a didn't good know, story. I didn't know any of those storage things. Uh, so I don't know. Just be, be careful with that. Um, I think, um, well, it's funny because I had a buddy who was a uh, you know, software developer and he put C++ on his resume. And they asked him about header files and he had no idea what they were. And I'm like, why would you ever do this? Yeah. Um, yeah, don't lie. Another thing, don't put anything on the resume you don't want to do. There's plenty of things that I know how to do that I don't want to do ever again. Yeah. So I don't put those things on a resume. Um, you just can't do that unless you want to do that type of stuff again. Um, they don't know that you know it, you know. You just haven't exposed it, so. So, I, all right, all right. I shouldn't say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, oh, thanks, Yellow Score. Uh, I would say, um, I do, so, <laughs> people do find your resume from buzzwords. Um, people pull your resumes from buzzwords, It's unfortunately. Um, so, I think, you know, I, I say, I, like, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm trying to, I want you to have good practices. So I'm saying, like, me at least be able to speak about the thing before you put it on there. But, uh, I mean, part of the game, part, I, part of the game is, is learning how to get people to notice your resume and things like that. And it's a gamble. Like, I, I would throw, you know, if you're having trouble getting callbacks, if you don't have a ton of things on your resume, I would throw a couple of extra things that you've been adjacent to that you've touched. Uh, if you've watched the boot camps and you yeah. put the, and you've like seen what Docker is and learned a tiny bit about Kubernetes and things like that, I would throw I would throw those things on there. It's a gamble, um, and I, I like you need to you need to understand that you might get asked about those those things, and it does increase your chances of having an, a very uncomfortable interview. But um, I you should I mean it's a, it's it's a game. It is all of it's a game. It really it, it shouldn't be, but it's it's all a game. Companies don't have time to sift through every single resume, uh, and they do use those buzzwords and things to pull things out. But uh, yeah, Thanks. yep. It's not that hard to sound technical uh, when talking about Kubernetes. Printers, that's that's, that's true. Printer troubleshooting. I love that. Printers, tons of printer troubleshooting. <laughs> Is there a mastermind resume building service? Absolutely not.
Uh, I'm a terrible resume builder and writer. Really, dude? I do pretty good with people. Um, um, no, no, no. So, so I know outside of tech too. By the way, they I'm a good, I'm a, I'm a good resume builder content wise. I'm a terrible like, like formatting. I think is uh is is important too. What's That's up, Brody Cody? Welcome to the channel. Thank you for the follow. There were like three other people before that. I'm sorry I missed you. Um, welcome to the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. Honestly. Oh, it's taking a little bit to update. I also got to move. I don't like this. Uh, hold on, Brody Cody got to get moved over. There we go. Okay. Ordering terrible. I'm lucky enough to have a recruiter. Yeah, I definitely need. I need. I'm really bad at formatting resumes. I'm, again, pretty good with the content. Um, pretty awful. About Dude, it. I just looked. I, I remember I was in college and I saw somebody's resume. Uh, we had to give our resumes to like the head of the CS department or something like that. Yep. And, um, they were gonna help us, you know, improve our resumes. And I just caught a peek of another kid's resume, and it was super nicely formatted. And I just stole it. Like I just stole the format. Like, oh, this is. A, I'm stealing this. And it's worked since, yo. <laughs> it was such a nice format. Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have like a four-year-old format, but I also have worked a lot of different jobs. <laughs> and uh, it, I, yeah, it's been it's been a lot. What's up, uh, Mass Polymorph? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. Good to have you. Welcome to the channel. So glad to have you here. Uh, yes, you can put on his resume, Mastermind's favorite troll. Uh, <laughs> yes. I 100%. That's cool. I, I agree. For any other troll that's on here, Blast 7 is, in fact, I'll stamp it right now, my favorite of trolls. It's been there for at least a week. <laughs> Y'all are crazy on here. Um, they be going at it. I love it. Yeah. So, again, back to whiteboard real quick. It, it's it's approach it. Approach it just how we learned in the algorithm sections. Break it down. Um, show your thought process. Show your thought process. Have a conversation. Ask questions. Um, it's okay to be like, "Hey, I'm not sure what to do right here." Like, you can you can incorporate the people who who are interviewing you in that process. Um, I I actually do like the um, I've seen some Silicon Valley like videos uh, where they're where it it although it is like a whiteboarding for you, uh, it's a little bit more of a paired programming experiment. Um, and I think I think I think actually think those are pretty cool. Actually, um, again, very uncomfortable. Um, I think that it does put you as the interviewer in a weird situation. Um, because again, there's no, there's, you haven't built any rapport with this person, uh, like like the comfort level, like all, all of it, they're in the position of power. Like if it doesn't go well, it's only bad for you. It's not bad for them. Uh, it's, it's just, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot that's in play there that can affect how you perform at it. Um, but again, if you break it down, I'm not saying you'll be able to solve it, but you can show, you can start to show what you know, like it's not just like, oh, well, I don't know how to do this. It's uh, okay. Like I read through it and I think that I can do this and I know that this is here and I know, I don't know how to do it, but I know that to get from here to here, I something's gotta happen here to make sure I move these around. I don't know. Uh, I'm just kind of talking <laughs> through that. Uh, I don't know. It's, 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 it can be interesting. Um, but it's hard. It is. There's no. There's no magic to it. Like whiteboarding is difficult. Um, it and it is something you will do uh, most likely. Uh, it makes you though, dude. Like it so makes you. Not makes you. I mean, you don't have to do that to be good at interviewing. But I found out that um, you learn your tics and you learn like how you respond in those situations. And after a couple bad ones, you really start to like. Uh, I think kind of get into your own and calm and. You know, it's not because you've already failed some. You already built two or three, so it's not like, and you're still alive. Like it's not like the end of the world. You know what I mean? Like I think it's it really just it it, it can definitely help speed up the process in the interviewing to get good. Yeah, Junior Rogers, I love that you can get aggressive. What kind of teammate would you be just sitting there watching me struggle? <laughs> get up oh, here and help. Yo, That's get, great. Oh, I like that. I, see, and I, but you know what? He would get the job, bro. Like, exactly. Like that. that like man. yeah, that's that's said with a little bit of facetiousness. You know, a little, a little like we're joking a little bit, but like also like not like like I would actually respond very good to something like that like as an interviewer like hey like joking around like show some personality and like it's the truth um <laughs> it's, it's it's the truth you know i i would get to this point it, it's okay to say something like this like at this point i don't have to do i would ask for help i would ask my teammates for some help would you mind uh, helping me through this I piece and i think after getting through this piece i could you know be able to move fo like forward on this i think that's fine um 
but yes it should it should it will scare you again the, like you just have it it's 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 simple like there's nothing else i can tell you besides practice um just so you can get comfortable solving problems like practice it practice it practice it practice it doesn't mean you'll be um not afraid but it'll mean you'll be better prepared for it when you hit when you hit it uh and do a lot of interviews do tons of interviews you'll get more comfortable i have a first internship interview on this thursday any advice cool so you're gonna be nervous it's your first one it's okay to be nervous um it is okay to i think it's also okay to let your especially as an internship i think it's also okay to let the um to let like the, the interviewer is going to know you're nervous as well um i think it's okay to share that kind of that kind of information um everyone always tell you just be comfortable be yourself yes those are things you should do but again it's very hard to get there um i think the things you can do instead of learning like right now you're probably thinking about all the things that you don't know that you could pick up on to be better again that we said in the beginning focus like right now go go in only care, like for the most part, just caring about things that you do know, like focus on those things that you're, that you, that you, you know, could talk about all day um, and go in there armed with those things to talk about. So as the conversation moves along, find ways to insert uh, the information that you do know, because it's, you'll, I mean, you'll be able to kill that stuff. So yeah, I mean, don't worry about the stuff that you don't, um, you know, learn as much as you can up until then, but don't kill yourself. Don't stress yourself out. Go on what you do know, armed with what you do know and, uh, and share that share that information you'll also i think a lot of times um even when it is very nervous you get more comfortable like your nerves kind of start to go away as you kind of get deeper into it uh even yeah. when it's going bad i think your nerves kind of go away and uh again you start building some of that rapport with the person interviewing you and also i would say since this is your first one um you know just going with the mindset that uh if you go in like with a learning experience mindset like okay this is just a learning experience um if it's not like life or death like you have to get this job um, I think a lot of the nerves will just kind of melt away. Like I'm learning, I'm learning what to do, what not to do. Uh, it's not the end of the world. If this doesn't work out, it's literally your first one. So, um, I think that'll melt a lot of the, the nerves away for you. I, I love, I love what Terrence just said again about, uh, about if, if it's not life or death that you get this job, go on interviews when you already have a job. When you already have a job that you're fine at, that's when you should start interviewing the most. Like, don't wait until you need to get one. Why do you have that job that you're comfortable at? Go on lots of interviews. Uh, when, when you're safe, you will you will do better at an interview when you are safe. When it's not necessary that you get it. The reason I closed that laptop on the guy was because I like I had I was good. Like I had a job. I think I actually had offers on the table from companies I didn't intend to go to at the time. That makes a lot more sense now, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. wasn't. I didn't need. I did not need the job when I was doing all that interviewing. It wasn't because I needed it. It was because I was completely comfortable. Um, and that's where I learned the most. <laughs> Talk about, bro. Talk about. Uh huh? Was Buddy like, was dude, active? was he still looking at you and you just like, yeah, I mean, it, dark? it would be it, like, let's, let's reenact it right now. Let's, oh my God. Let's, we, we will, we will, okay. So it'd be like this. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, ZFS storage is, you know, it's super great. It's super, uh, super dope. In, and that's what it was, uh, that's what it was like. <laughs> Oh my God! Really? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was just it was just that's how it was. It was just, Dude, that is the funniest. Don't 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 do that because he actually like it was funny because it, like oh no it actually sounded like he, oh, so bad. when he called back it actually sounded like he might like was still interested in talking like I guess I had told him some other things because it was for a storage engineer I was not a storage engineer I, I was a Linux admin um and he was asking me nothing but in-depth storage questions I found out later that he was the CEO of the company uh so it was actually not a small company and I was getting interviewed by the CEO and so like I don't know man that was a bad Ooh. hopefully that doesn't affect me in the future maybe I'll find him maybe I'll try to find him on LinkedIn yeah, um, friend him, man. You got yo, we gotta friend him and bring him on the Twitch. Yeah, or, yeah, 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 yeah. Like full circle, yeah. bro, and explain this because this is just hilarious. Yes, I will. I will try to find him. I'm pretty sure it was this company, Zadara Storage. Oh man, that is just uh, the funniest story. Like, yes, <laughs> your hand just went around and. Hey, I, I mean, hey, I was, I was, I was young. Uh, oh, no, I, I don't think, I don't think he was desperate. I mean, it, like again, the conversation was fine. I just had no like. I, like I think he this is the thing I think he liked me I think he liked me and he knew that I had skill some skills it just was not in storage <laughs> and that's what they needed uh 
Next Enta, maybe? I don't know, maybe. What is Next Enta? Oh, oh the know. company. No, I don't think it was. I think it started with a Z. Um, yeah, I think it started with a Z. I think it was a, I really think it was a Dara storage. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. Um, Man, that's crazy. But yeah, pretty, pretty uh, crazy time. Don't do what I did, please. Like, it just wasn't. It wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> he needed it. It was like, no, no. Mm -mm. I don't Mustang in PG County. Well, it, what's funny is when I first got to Baltimore with that Mustang, that's the first thing somebody did when we moved in. Dude walked up. I had the Mustang, my friend, a Camaro, and a dude walked up immediately and was like, whatever y'all are into, I want in. And I was like, bro, this is a... Oh. Uh, th this is a $13,000 car, <laughs> okay? He's like, chill. <laughs> <laughs> I make... Fourteen dollars an hour, and it takes up all of my money because it takes a lot of gas. Um, but yeah, that was pretty funny. It was like I, I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, I guess it was a cool Mustang, though." You know, what? I'm gonna find a picture for y'all. Oh, the 5.0? Huh? Like, it was a... Yes, it was a 5.0. It was a 2014 5.0. Um, I'm googling right black, now. Black windows. Um, it was you black like windows. Thing? Yeah, black wheels. I, I debadged oh, it. Oh, black so on black. It didn't have any badging on it. Um, oh man, was it like a smoky like? Oh, was it matte black or was it just shiny? Nah, it was like the shiny black. Shiny black. Um, Twenty fourteen. What'd you say? Twenty fourteen. Uh, or no, 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 no. Twenty fourteen is when they redid it. It was a twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Dude, that's a gorgeous car, I bro. I don't remember. Got that joint. Ah, look at this. Hold on. Let me put this on here. Nice I'm gonna share my. Oh, she is my baby. D Badger and everything. Uh, how do I change this? Let's go with the. Hold on, you guys are gonna check this out because you have to. No nope, wrong display. Nelson, what? Hold on, here it goes. Two. The one. I did a lot just to show you guys this. But look at it. That would be epic. It was beautiful. It wasn't that epic. Uh, it was gorgeous. That was her. Oh yeah, dude. That was that. I loved her. That's my dad's truck. Oh, he kept it clean too. Yeah, uh, kind of clean. Nice, dude. That's gorgeous. But yep. What'd you say? A peach tree. In the, you know, peach tree. Uh, so there's a there's a peach. There used to be growing up. There's a peach tree right here. All right, y'all. So y'all heard the bull story, right? I think y'all heard the bull story. Oh. This is the field. This is the power, the Pepco field. So this is the summertime. So all of this is like growing up and they cut it all down. And so in the winter and like the, the fall, it's like no vegetation over here. The, this is where the bull was. Like the bull used to come right here and run through this little fence. Yeah, man. Pretty crazy. It was a wild, wild life. And what then he head butted your dad's truck. The same uh, this truck, yeah. No, oh, no, no. It, uh, no. Ah. It, he, had a, he had another truck before that. Full story. All the pieces are coming together, man. Yeah, man. I want to see a, a news article. I want to see something. Uh, we have we have pictures of the bull uh, after it died. <laughs> that's the only pictures we have. Oh, man. You know, uh, smartphone cameras team, weren't as good bro. back then. All right. Okay, yeah, Nelson... Nahum, maybe. I don't know. I'll check the. I'll check. Uh, he's definitely on it. Let's check that out. I don't know. Hold on. Let's see. We have digressed. We have. We have digressed. But now we have to check it out. Oh, it's called Zadara. I think so. I think that's that. That feels right. Well, I'll look it up later. Click the link. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, um, no, I click the link. Hold on. Let's see if you get a virus first. Let's see what's Do I have a? Darn it. I want to click it here because I want people to see what I'm looking at. Oh no, uh, I can't. I can't copy it to this. Send it. Can someone copy and paste it in there one more time. I do want to click on it. Can someone copy it and paste it in there? The... <laughs> Please just copy and paste it in the chat one more time so I can see it. I got you. Hold yes. On. There it is. It's coming. Just take. Uh. Time. There it is. It might have been this guy. Which one? Which one? I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna check come my, on, man. <laughs> I'm going to check. I'm going to check my email. Near sounds right. That's him. No, but why would the CFO? Uh, 
Uh, Glad I got demoted. Uh, nope. Nope. I, I'm I'm actually a hundred percent sure. I, I'm tripping. It was definitely Vladimir Popovsky. I, I have the emails from this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Are you close? Yeah. It was it was it was Vlad. Um, oh, Vlad. It was definitely because I, I, I remember his name was super. Yeah. Yes. I have emails from Vladimir. I'll go find them. We'll we'll reach out. I'll see. We gotta reach out, man. We'll re we'll reach out. We'll re oh I'll man. He probably he probably doesn't remember. This was like. This was like uh, 2000 and... Oh, he remembers. Uh, <laughs> he remembers. It's 2020. This had to be 2013, maybe. If I don't Chick-fil-A, yes. I, yes, he did have an accent. He had an accent. Um, I'm, I don't know if it was Russian, but he had an accent. And I will invite him to Chick-fil-A. And if you close the MacBook on him, he'll never forget that. Um, I bet you'd be surprised at how many people uh, close, their, close their laptops on an interview. Or I just tell myself that every day to make myself no, feel better. No, Aaron, that's what you tell yourself every day to make yourself feel better. Dude, it was I didn't know. I did not Come know. On, man. Any, I didn't know anything he was asking me. <laughs> just <laughs> close Mr. The Lap Clock Closey Ghoster. Yeah, it, I mean, look, man, it was, it was, again, I didn't need a job. I, it was bad. It was wrong. I get, I'm like... telling you, I'm telling you about my bad experiences so that you don't make the same mistakes that I make. Um, <laughs> It's like a thousand ways I can figure out to better end that interview than closing the laptop. Bro. How? How? Right now. You said it. Come okay. On. One. A thousand ways. You don't have a single one. Hey, man. Um, I really don't know this stuff. It's really outside of my uh, my knowledge. And and um, I'm feeling a little uncomfortable for this position. So I don't. I just don't think it's going to be a, a good fit for me. Um, huh. Done. See how easy that was? <laughs> my man closed the laptop. Cause... I mean, all right. Can I, can I? Can you take it back to when you were like 22? Fair enough, bro. Would you? Would you? Would yeah. you? I mean, right now, that's definitely like I would have no, like I would have no problem doing that right now. Like, hey, well, no, I would BS my way through it now. Um, to be hundred percent honest. Um, but yes, that does sound like a, re a more reasonable answer. Um, but You're right I, though, dude, young is definitely a different thing. You I have was a different mindset. It was so, and I thought it was like hot stuff uh like i had started like i was killing interviews and stuff and i thought i was the man and that's why i told you i was applying for everything that's why i even ended up in this position and they called me back and i was like yeah i'll do that interview of course you want a senior storage engineer i know about hard drives got this <laughs> right i know how to check this space on the linux server i know exactly what to do you know df dash h and you know d, d u if i want to find out what's using it and oh, if i need man. you know i can I, I know how to repartition stuff like i'm good boy that was uh he was asking me very specific very specific like 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 the process of uh migrating from like this this uh, storage type to and reformatting to this one like what do you have to do what are the caveats when doing this gotcha. i was like bro can you please please don't ask me another question and he kept going. Like, I didn't know any of the answers. He just kept asking me harder questions. But it didn't get easier. So it's his fault. Oh, man. Yo, I love how we just blamed him. <laughs> Turn off the Wi Fi. That's a good one. See? That's a, that's a good you one. You basically did. I mean, I'm not feeling it. Thanks for your time. These are good. Rocky one. I can't get behind. That. That's funny. Um, <laughs> see, I, I, I can't. I can't. Google search questions. I, I, I. Mm. That was a, I wouldn't do that again. I hope they're doing great. It seems they're still in business. He's still there, right? Was he chief services officer at the time? I don't. I don't remember. I don't. Remember, I don't know. I remember him being significant, like a high up person, uh, a high, pretty high up person. Yeah. Oh man. Yep. That's so funny. I'm gonna find the email, and I'm not gonna do it now because I don't know what's in my email. Yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna put myself at risk like that, but um, the move. yeah, because I don't remember if it was through a recruiter or not e either. Um, I don't think it was. I think I got that one on my own somehow. Luckily, nope. I'm actually gonna search for it right now, off screen. Yep. Oh, that's amazing. I typed in Z A D and Vladimir Popovsky popped up. Uh, so, Ooh. okay. Oh, you're reading the emails. Yeah, I'm so yeah. Yep. I'm gonna reach out. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good. Oh, oh, oh! I did get a uh, not selected letter. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you okay? Uh huh. At least they told you after. Here it so goes. Follow it up. Okay. 
and from right from Vladimir himself. Oh, what? <laughs> yo! <laughs> so just so you guys can clearly see, uh, I'm not lying about. <laughs> I'm not making these things up. So okay, so interestingly enough, this is what was this is what was annoying. They 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 put this like that's how they got me actually. I remember this. It was for a senior DevOps engineer, Linux specialist. I was a Linux specialist at the time. This, he told me at the very beginning, he was like, this is for like, he was like, you basically need to be like, you need to be a storage engineer. Like that's what you need. Like he only asked me storage questions, only no other types of questions. So maybe I exited too early, but uh, this is a lie. They were not impressed with my credentials and experience. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, bro. And just to prove to you that, uh, again, I see, I actually had an interview, so they didn't just send me that after seeing my, uh, after seeing my thing, they, uh, yeah. And that so seemed like the generic response, uh, yeah. that company sent out. Yeah. Yep. So awesome. I got an invite and everything. So just to, I'm glad I was able to find that. I like, I was like, yo, Vladimir sounds exactly like who I was, <laughs> I was speaking to. Um, I, I'm, we, we should reach out. I'm going to reach out to him on LinkedIn. We're going to find out. This is troll. That's, no, I'm going to, I am, I am going to tell him how we found him. Uh, maybe we'll uh, have a coffee and I'll let him know how I got to where I am now. Um, so just know that if you are looking for a career in tech, uh, you can make some mistakes and still be okay in the future. Like me, yeah, I guess. Fine. Yeah. Um, all right. That was, uh, Oh, that went by really fast, actually. Dude, super fast. Um, I'm to real quick. Yeah, that wasn't. Uh, and I'm shockingly not exhausted. I'm, like, not, I'm not as tired exhausted as at all. all. But hopefully, you got something out of that. Um, hopefully, we answered some of your questions. I saw a lot of questions in there, but I was trying to keep you going. See, the date is wrong, man. I'm telling you, I went to the site. Huh? If you look at the dates, if you expand that that window and see the full. That's why I kept getting confused. What's um, what date is wrong? The today's the twenty third, right? No. Bro. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? That's why I got confused. Why is this broken? <laughs> I was like, "What's today?" Today's the twenty third. Twenty. Oh well. Oh, you know what happened? Um, we skipped a. We skipped a. No, I fixed it though. Now we skipped something. I fixed it though. This is, this is old code. Ah, that explains it. Functions lambda. Oh yeah, we yeah. This, the this, this, this is this is old code. Uh, the goodness came through. We missed the stream. And we missed we the stream. Since then. No, I I did update it. Oh. Maybe I'm you gonna, did it for the DevOps one and not I'm, this one. I'm gonna prove. No, we didn't skip the DevOps one. Uh, I'm gonna prove it to you that I updated it. Um, because it was oh, you're out right. there. It was Python. I remember. I definitely updated it. These things get to Aaron, y'all. By the way, Aaron. Yeah, is it like, does. <laughs> yo, <laughs> I I know, I know, uh, I know, I did it. Oh, you know what happened? What spelling? Maybe I didn't. I, I wait, <laughs> bro. We did it live. Eight days ago, what, what when we before we did it live? Let's see what uh, let's see what code was in here. Let's look at content, uh, curriculums, Python. Uh, what what day did we miss? Oh, it was the day we went to the um. The uh, that that thing, that thing. I don't know what day that was. When we got stuck behind that train. Well, I fixed it. Maybe I never pushed it. I don't. Oh, you know what it was? I did fix it, but what, but it was uh, that was when I was trying to make the uh, the uh, GitHub action stuff work, and it never worked. Gotcha. Ah, that that that. So the only thing that's the only thing that's frustrating about that is that was like, out of all the things that I was supposed to do, that was the one thing that I did immediately, and I was proud of myself. Nice. So. Okay, well, or did I do, put it here instead? No, okay. Maybe it's on my, maybe I never pushed it. I don't know. I definitely went in and tried to update that though. But yes, that is why the dates are. The well, dates the are. GitHub action thing was like problematic. I don't know if it ever pushed, maybe, I don't know. It didn't push, it never, I never got yeah. it working. All right, well, there we go. That is why it's off. Um, and then we got a bootcamp retro. 
Uh, oh, wait, we got a software AMA on Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. And then it's on Friday. Um, yeah, cool. So. Nice. Is the Kingdom Hearts score in the background? Pro- yes, it was a Kingdom Hearts. Um, I'm listening to... Someone shared this on Twitter yesterday. Kingdom Hearts. Uh, this is the video game lo-fi playlist. And I actually really... I really like this. Uh, You're digging it, yeah. Copy playlist link. I'll share it here if anyone wants it. Um, but yes, tomorrow, if anyone uh, is interested, tomorrow we're going to be doing day two of our Operation Quarantine project. We're building a, a open source learning center, uh, a platform um, in an agile fashion. So we're just going to be hacking around all day. Um, just messing around, sitting around, hacking around all day. There were a lot of people on today. We got raided by the Prime again today with, with like 139 people. So that was uh that was pretty cool. We got like four or five raids today. Um, so if you're around um, and you just want to tune in, see see what we're doing, see what we're struggling with, because uh, we struggled a lot today. Uh, feel free to tune in, mm-hmm. have some fun, uh, provide some insight. But um, yeah, that's what we'll be doing tomorrow and for the whole week, to be honest. So. We'll be doing a lot of streaming. We will be exhausted by Wednesday for sure. Um, yes, but it's, it'll be fun. But, though, but it'll be fine. It'll, it'll be fun. Uh, it'll it's be cool. Fun. Like, I'm actually having a good time uh, not having to think about work, even though <laughs> I am having to think about work. I was going to say, you're still probably low key working. I am low key work working. Today? But See yeah, I did. Oh, man. Me and, uh, me and Candace hopped on a call right after we got off a call to uh, work through something. So, oh, but it's all good. Yeah. It's all, it's all good. All I gotta do, once I get a more comfortable chair, I think I'm good. So, I don't ask much of, of you all, but uh, I'm gonna need y'all to sub for at least one month so I can buy a new chair. Get a new chair. <laughs> like, get a, just so I can get a new chair, man. I need it. I love this it. chair is killing me. Um, but cool. Thank you, everyone. Who's online tonight? Um, oh, we gotta you. The appreciate, again, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Not, is he favor. on? Yeah. Oh, well then, we'll head back over. And um, Thanks, guys, for joining. This is fun. As always, I'm me, Prime Agen. Did it right the first time. Boom. Right over the Prime again. Thank you, everybody, for another great stream. Um, yeah, we only have one more. One more down, and we're all done. And next one will be fun. Uh, tune in on Wednesday for all the cool stuff. Thank you, MKTBS. Ooh. Appreciate the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much. You got me one step closer to my chair. I'll never ask you for anything again, <laughs> uh, but now I appreciate it. What's up, Adam? Thank you. Congrats on, I finally saw your stuff come in. I know all about you now. Um, good to see you. Hopefully we can, uh, we'll, we'll hop online and we can talk even though I'm out this week. Um, but yeah, cool. Appreciate everybody. Let's go say hi to the Prime again. Everyone have a good night. See you guys. Yeah.